Chapter 46 Gulp Jin Wu's Adam's apple bobbed up and down. Indeed, it was rather scary not knowing what kind of quest would pop up. However, his anticipation was even greater than his fears. While he was looking for a suitable location to start the quest, he used his phone to search for topics related to changing one's class online. New skills. Benefits to one's growth. Exclusive weapons reserved for a particular class. Connected quests. Etc., etc. They were all from video games, sure. But the accepted norm was that changing one's class would result in many benefits. And level 40 was when I could get my class. Of course, it wasn't all good news either. He often spotted ominous sounding thread titles as he browsed through online forums. I chose the wrong class, and now I'm bummed out. Only if I knew, I'd have gone with a different class. Fucking hell. A moment of bad decisions later, I'm quitting my dearest game and returning to the normal society. Should I erase this character and start all over again? Well, these were also related to video games, anyways. He certainly had far less to worry about here since he only used daggers as his main weapon until now. All the skills he had acquired leaned towards the profession of assassin. Right. I've got dagger techniques and stealth as my skills. Not only that, he invested mainly in raising the stats of strength and agility, so it was kind of hard to imagine getting another class other than assassin. As his thoughts arrived here, Jin Wu summoned the poison fang of Kasaka from his inventory. Shush. This feeling of the hilt falling so perfectly in his hand. Yeah, this for me is the most comfortable. He nodded his head like a wise old sage. While gripping the dagger tightly, Jin Wu shifted his gaze towards the message floating in the air. Well then? Now that he was all done with getting ready for any unexpected events, he firmed his resolve and answered the message. Will you take on the class change quest now? Yn. Yes, I'm taking it on. The moment he thought of taking on the quest, another message popped into his view. Tai Ring, you're now partaking in the class change quest. A new dungeon will be generated for this quest. Generating? A new dungeon? Before he had the chance to interpret what that message was saying, a change took place before him really fast. Wuong! A black hole formed right in front of his eyes. That was merely the beginning, too. Wuong! Wuong! The black hole the size of a bean expanded to the size of a coin, then to that of a volleyball, and eventually, it grew large enough for a person to walk through. Isn't this... Jin Wu's eyes grew wider. He was expecting to see a new message with the contents of the quest pop up in front of his eyes, but this... What appeared before him was, without a doubt, a gate. To think, a gate would show up here. This one didn't seem any different from the others he was familiar with. Only that, it was a bit smaller than usual. The system sent him a new message as if to urge him on. Please enter the dungeon through the gate. I need to calm down. Jin Wu quickly collected himself. Right. If he thought about it, there wasn't much of a difference whether he used a key or a gate to enter a dungeon. Indeed, he was simply taken aback just now by the sight of a gate forming artificially like this. Also, this would be his first time seeing a gate form. He always just walked into one that was already there, so... When the chain of his thoughts stopped there, a new question popped into his mind. Hang on. Can other hunters enter this gate as well? Too bad. He had no method to experiment on this one today. Well, there were no hunters nearby that he could call for assistance. Nor did he have anyone who would rush over here because he gave them a call. He momentarily recalled Yu Jin Ho's face, but slowly shook his head. How will I take care of the aftermath if I called him and something bad happens? It was then. As if to urge him on again, the message blinked. Tai Ring, please enter the dungeon through the gate. The mechanical beep brought him back to his senses. He slapped his cheeks a couple of times to wake himself up. This is no time to daydream. If he succeeded, then a new class and all the rewards that followed would be his, and if he failed, then he couldn't even tell what might happen to him. So, he needed to focus here. Fu Wu. After taking a deep breath, Jin Wu held the poison fang of Kasaka in reverse grip 
and entered the gate. You have entered the dungeon. Eh? He entered in a state of taut tension, but to his surprise, there was nothing here. He was greeted by the sight of an ordinary cave-like dungeon. Isn't this exactly the same as the others? He heard that high-ranking dungeons were often linked to other worlds, so he was kind of worried about such a thing happening to him. But thankfully, he was spared from that. Instead, a strange message popped up into his view. Tai Ring. The current location forbids the usage of potions as well as the functions of the store, and your physical state will not recover even if you level up. Jin Wu confirmed that there was no presence of monsters nearby and put away his dagger. Then, his head began tilting this way and that. This isn't going to be easy, is it? Maybe because his class change was up for grabs, there were quite a few restrictions here to contend with. The most important one was that he couldn't replenish his spent energy or stamina, and couldn't heal himself using potions or level-ups. The damage will stack, in other words. If he got injured, then that would spell his doom. Since he couldn't heal himself, he had no choice but to be thorough and cautious with every action he took. Meaning, I gotta keep my wits about me. Jin Wu closed the message, and as he'd do every time when entering a dungeon, he confirmed the presence of the exit. You can't leave until the class change process has been concluded. A message popped up as soon as he touched the surface of the gate. He put some strength behind his hand, but it didn't even budge. Jin Wu retracted his hand. The exit is blocked off. An unknown grade, impossible to heal himself, and no exit. This dungeon was a pretty risky proposition. Even a hunter with balls of steel wouldn't want to tread in a place like this one. However, high risk doesn't always equate to bad things, does it? Indeed, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. He learned that through experience. If clearing this place was difficult because of all the restrictions, then didn't that also mean there was an amazing opportunity waiting for him at the end? There was only one way to find out. I'll know once I get there. Jin Wu took his first step forward. His eyes gazed far forward, and all he could see was the cavern-like passageway with seemingly no end, and there were no monsters nearby. Wait, since this is still within the system's influence, should I call them monsters and not monsters? TL. Well, sorry about this line. The author had been using the Hanja word for monsters to describe those found in the regular Gates dungeons, while using the Romanized English word monster to describe those found in instant dungeons. They mean the same thing, obviously, but well, wordplay and all that. Even though they both meant the same thing. In any case, that wasn't the only difference to consider. There were lit torches lining up at a fixed interval along the cavern walls as well. Instead of luminous stones I got torches, huh? Unfortunately, the light from the torches was not an effective source of illumination. No matter how many there were, they were still not enough to light up the entire passageway. So, there were plenty of hidden shadows. With the deafening silence being accompanied by the gloomy shadows, this place came off far more eerie and ominous than a regular dungeon. I can see no problem, but still. Should he say it's down to the atmosphere of this place? Jin Wu pulled out the nearest torch and held it. His front brightened it ever so slightly with the torch in his hand. Yeah, this is better. Jin Wu formed a satisfied smile. He took one last glance behind him and slowly made his way forward, the torch lighting the way. Just how long did he walk? When he walked for a long, long time, he finally got to a bend in the passageway. And just beyond it, he sensed multiple presences. Are they finally here? Jin Wu carefully placed the torch on the ground and stood back up. Shururu. His right hand was now holding his favorite dagger instead. He briefly entertained the idea of using stealth to quickly deal with his enemies, but gave up on that after remembering the crazy expenditure of his mana. Well, he wouldn't be able to use potions to replenish the spent mana in this place, after all. If he carelessly spent mana here, then he might be unable to use the necessary skills when he really needed to. It's coming this way. Jin Wu pressed tightly against the wall and waited for the enemy to show up around the bend. Clank, clank. Whenever this thing took a step, 
The metallic clang reverberated loudly in the passageway. The noises were getting closer. Clank, clank. Hearing that strange noise, Jin Wu tilted his head. Could it be carrying some kind of chained weapons? He was curious, but there was no need to get anxious. He'd get his answers soon enough. Five, four, three. Jin Wu tightly held the dagger in the reverse grip and stopped breathing. It was to prevent the opponent from hearing the sound of his breaths. Two, one. Clank, clank. Finally, the enemy's shadow could be seen. Zhao. When his countdown hit zero, the enemy revealed itself. Jin Wu aimed for the side of its neck. Clang! But he got to hear metal hitting metal instead. The blade didn't go in. Metal armor! Jin Wu's eyes widened. Finally confirming the identity of his opponent, Jin Wu quickly took several steps back. It's a human! He was now facing a knight decked out fully in a suit of armor. Its face was hidden behind the helmet and he couldn't see what they looked like. Jin Wu called out to it while thinking to himself, Could it be... I... However, the knight didn't even utter a word and simply lunged in Jin Wu's direction. Thud, thud, thud. The knight rushed forward like a raging bull and tried to shoulder tackle him, but Jin Wu lightly tilted out of the way and evaded the attack. The knight couldn't win against the momentum and continued to run forward for a bit longer before somehow bringing itself to a stop. Maybe it's not a human? He was able to take a quick peek at a close distance, and he could tell something was off. He couldn't sense the beating heart that a normal person should possess. So, most likely, it was not a human. He was now facing off against a type of monster he'd never even heard of before. A monster that armed itself from head to toe, no less. It's like... Wasn't this like he was actually fighting against another person? Swurung. The knight turned around and unsheathed the sword mounted on its hips. Just as Jin Wu had done, this knight probably didn't plan on letting him go alive. After sensing its intense hostility, Jin Wu's glare became a level sharper. Dash! Your movement speed has increased by 40%. The first one to strike wins. Before the enemy made its move, Jin Wu dashed in first. Swish! Jin Wu evaded the hurried swing of the knight's longsword and stabbed his dagger at various points in its amour. Clang. Clang. Unfortunately, he couldn't damage it. The armor's too thick. Not only was it thick, the surface was smooth as well, so when he landed a straight blow the blade didn't go in but simply slid off to the side. It was at this point that the knight swung its sword in a huge arc. Swish! Jin Wu ducked lower and evaded it. The blade swung past Jin Wu's head by a hair's breadth. A big move like this would inevitably expose a big opening. Another chance had come by. Jin Wu lunged in closer to the knight and gathered his strength in his dagger holding arm. Vital points targeting! Crack! The tip of the dagger penetrated past the armor. Did it work? However, it must have not suffered any damage, since it swung its sword down vertically with great force not caring at all about the dagger stuck to its side. Swish. Jin Wu rapidly threw himself back. Clang. The blade slammed into the ground and sparks flew everywhere. Jin Wu took several steps back and corrected his posture. His dagger remained stuck to the knight's side. Tsk. Jin Wu clicked his tongue. It's not really that strong, is it? That was his earnest assessment. Probably because of all that heavy armor, its movement was dull and its attack pattern was also rather simple too. Only that, its defense against bladed weapons was truly exceptional. Jin Wu rolled up his sleeves. Well, I've already fought against an enemy with thick armor that blades can't penetrate. His relaxed demeanor came from previous experience. The boss monster. Poison Fang Blue Kasaka that broke a steel sword infused with magical energy in one hit. He had experienced killing such a snake before. Compared to the Kasaka, that thing is nothing. A thin smile slowly formed on Jin Wu's lips, since that was a pretty good memory to recall. Thud, thud, thud. The knight stupidly charged in again, perhaps trusting the protection provided by its armor. I knew it. It's a really simple creature. Jin Wu easily evaded the knight's attack, aimed at his shoulder, slid to its back, and caught it in a headlock. Krayak. Since its neck area was also protected by armor, it had not choked to death, but... Crack. 
crumple. Jin Wu's arm muscles expanded and veins bulged. Jin Wu wasn't planning to choke the knight to begin with. He gritted his teeth, his eyes shooting up wide open. And when that happened, crack. Along with a pretty sickening noise, the helmet was ripped off. This was the moment when his strength stat exceeding 100 points had begun shining ever so brightly. I did it. The knight lifelessly knelt down on the ground once its head was separated from the body. Thud, you defeated the knight. A simple but concise message announcing the end of the battle popped up. A flickering light indicating the presence of loot came from somewhere on the armor, but Jin Wu's attention was elsewhere. What the heck? There's nothing inside? The helmet he held in his hands was totally empty. He quickly checked inside the armor to make sure, but it was the same story. Empty. Does that mean I was fighting against a suit of armor that was moving by itself? Just as he arrived at his conclusion, two more knights rushed into view from around the bend. It seemed that they had belatedly sensed the unfolding battle. Clank. Clank. The knights discovered Jin Wu, and as if they had made a prior arrangement, they unsheathed their longswords in unison. Jin Wu tossed the empty helmet away and loosened the muscles on his neck and shoulders. He now knew how to fight these things. So, this is the real beginning, huh? Thud, 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 thud. Jin Wu's lips formed a slight grin as he stared at the knights rushing towards him. His first step in clearing this dungeon proved to be on the right track. Chapter 47 Was it because of all the restrictions? The loot drop rate turned out to be rather excellent. Jin Wu only defeated three knights, yet two of them dropped an item each. As far as percentages go, that was 66.6%. .6%. It was an unimaginably high drop rate compared to other instant dungeons. Especially considering the fact that, when all he got after clearing a floor of an instant dungeon several times in a row would be a few japtum and stuff he had no use for other than to sell them off at the store. Item Superior Knight's Breastplate has been found. Take it? Of course I'm taking it. Just a thought, and the breastplate of the now headless knight kneeling and unmoving on the ground disappeared and reappeared right before his feet, and its information popped up in his view. Item. Superior knight's breastplate. Rarity. B type. Armor reduction in physical damage. Puzzle 7%. Your movement will slow down if your strength is below 80. 7% increase in physical damage reduction. When added to what he had already, the physical damage reduction would be 27%. If this number reaches 100%, does that mean I become completely impervious to all physical damage? He briefly wondered about that, before realizing that a defensive item ranked B in rarity only added 7% to the overall value, and his thoughts rapidly changed. Even if he found himself an item with a rarity of A, the reduction may not go above 30-40% so maybe it was impossible to add up to 100%. Still, every little bit helps, so... He was sure of benefiting greatly if he continued to increase that stat bit by bit. He already had witnessed the power of good items through Yu Jin Ho, after all. So, I do it like this, right? Jin Wu picked up the breastplate. As expected, a message regarding equipping the armor popped up in his view. Will you equip item, Superior Knight's Breastplate? No matter who looked at it, this breastplate's design was rather clunky and embarrassing, and he'd never wear it in public. If he didn't have prior experience with the gatekeeper's necklace, he might have hesitated a great deal before reluctantly agreeing to put it on, but now. It was a different story now. Yes. TT ring. Item. Superior Knight's breastplate has been equipped. The breastplate disappeared from the view. Jin Wu summoned the status window and confirmed his stats. Reduction in physical damage, 27%. So, it really went up. Jin Wu felt around his chest area. He couldn't feel anything weird. He moved his body around this way and that, but didn't feel anything strange or out of place. It was exactly the same as when he equipped the gatekeeper's necklace for the first time. Nice. Next, Jin Wu shifted his gaze over to the unmoving knight stuck in the distant corner. It was bent and crumpled so badly that nothing looked salvageable, but still, the flickering light indicating the loot's presence could be seen on it quite clearly. Item. Leather pouch has been found. Take it? Of course, he was the one responsible for that. 
but even he had to concede that he had gone a bit overboard there. He fought barehanded and well. It was really hard to control his strength. That was why. With a solemn expression on his face, Jin Wu walked closer and reached out to take the loot away. Acquire it. Item. Leather pouch has been opened. 30,000 gold is inside. 30,000 gold has been acquired. Huh? Nothing entered his hands. Yet he got a message declaring that he acquired some gold instead. Was it a bit different from regular items? Jin Wu remained somewhat mystified as he accessed his inventory. And sure enough, his gold amount had really increased by 30,000. Current gold, 863,400. I got 30,000 gold in one go? Was it because knights were supposed to be wealthy or some such? He abruptly remembered that most humanoid-type monsters usually gave out more loot than any other types in video games. Now that he thought about it some more, not finding a greater number of useful items on a human being, when compared to an animal or an insect, didn't make a whole lot of sense, now did it. He couldn't be sure if this dungeon followed that principle or not, though. In any case, it could only be good news to him. He was planning to save up more gold and buy a few items from the store. And if gold kept showing up as loot in this fashion, then his planned shopping day would arrive much sooner than his initial estimation. Is there anything else that I can take with me? Well, human greed supposedly knew no limits, so... Jin Wu momentarily forgot about his true goal of wandering in this dungeon and greedily searched around his vicinity. The armor worn by the knights were all pretty much mangled beyond recover from the fight just now, so it was a no. Eventually, Jin Wu's eyes found the knight's swords. They kinda look useful, don't they? Those long swords must have been brand new, looking all shiny and slick like that. Although he couldn't use them properly since they weren't daggers, he could either sell them in the store, or if he couldn't, he could try hawking them off to other hunters at a later date. Jin Wu picked up a sword. However, as soon as he did, the sword rapidly rusted up and dissolved into a pile of dust before scattering away. What the hell? This process happened in only a couple of seconds. Is it because I'm not supposed to touch them? What a regrettable thing this was, but naughty could do about it now. Jin Wu dusted his hands off and picked up the torch he left on the ground. When he walked around the bend where the knights showed up from, yet another passage with no end in sight greeted him. It looked like there was still a long way to go. These battles felt like he was revisiting schoolwork. The notion sounded funny, but that's what Jin Wu ended up thinking, totally out of the blue. During the past two hours of hunting inside the dungeon, he met four different types of monsters. Knights, mages, assassins, and archers. Is it stealth this time? An assassin type suddenly vanished from his senses. Jin Wu didn't panic and extended his perception to its fullest. And soon enough, picked up on the presence sneaking up on him from behind. Swish. Jin Wu powerfully smacked away the assassin's dagger with his trusty poison fang of Kasaka, and seizing the opening created as the monster was pushed back, stabbed forward in a deadly and accurate attack of his own. The poison fang accurately landed in the middle of the target's chest. Stab. You defeated the assassin. Level up. The assassin received a fatal wound and turned into a wisp of black smoke before disappearing from his view with nary a scream. Plop and where it once stood only the leather clothes it used to wear remained. Why are they all humanoid-type monsters, anyway? Every time he killed them, he felt as if... Jin Wu slowly shook his head. One nice thing here was that he couldn't see the monsters' faces. Knights wore helmets, assassins and archers used deep hoods, and mages used hats attached to their robes to hide most of their faces. Jin Wu turned around to continue on his journey. But then, a flash of blinding light exploded right in front of his eyes. A mage had hidden itself and quietly completed a light magic spell. Kaboom! An ear-splitting explosion occurred next. However, Jin Wu was already well behind the mage by the time that happened. The mage sensed his presence behind it, and flinched grandly as he hurriedly recited another chant. Too bad. Jin Wu didn't miss this opening and swung his dagger diagonally. The mage, too, turned into a wisp of smoke and disappeared. Plop. Jin Wu glared down at the ownerless robe on the ground and stored the dagger back in the inventory. 
I got hit by one of those, way back when I got too careless. The thing was, he was already ready to react as soon as he began sensing mana gathering around in a single point. Zhou Gyu Huan's light magic, Jin Wu wasn't dumb enough to get hit by a similar magic to that dead guy's. This was one of the reasons why he thought that all these battles were like him studying and revisiting his past fights. That's not all, is it? In order to defeat different types of monsters, he needed different stats. For knights, it was strength. For assassins, perception. Archers, agility. And finally, for mages, it was stamina. The whole thing was set up in a way that if any of the corresponding stats weren't high enough, he'd have a real hard time trying to deal with the individual monsters. If his strength was lacking, then he wouldn't have been able to cause enough damage to the knights. And if his perception was too low, he'd have gone through hell in order to locate the assassins. Me racing stats Evanly has really paid off dividends here. His intelligence stat was still on the low side, but all he had to do there was to economize his MP usage. That was all. Item. Leather pouch has been opened. 20,000 gold and canteen containing lukewarm water are inside. 20,000 gold and canteen containing lukewarm water have been acquired. Jin Wu summoned that canteen as soon as it showed up in his inventory and took several gulps. Pho. His fatigue was piling up noticeably now. Just how far am I supposed to go here? Could there be no end to this place? Jin Wu put the empty canteen down on the ground and placed his hands on his hips. It had been over three hours already since he entered this dungeon. Both his body and mind were getting fatigued now. Should I take a short break? Jin Wu sat down and leaned against the cave wall. Status window. Tie ring. Tiredness. 66. The tiredness stat had sneaked up to a dangerous level. Above 70, his body and mind would start to get negatively affected. He needed to take a short nap and decrease that stat right away. Jin Wu leaned his head against the wall. Sleepiness came over him almost instantly. He was so tired that, even when in an environment as dangerous as this place, he didn't need a lot of effort to fall asleep. However, swish. He heard the sharp whistle of air parting ways. Time slowed down, and Jin Wu accurately snatched the flying arrow with his hand. Grab. Jin Wu's eyes opened up. He saw an archer knocking another arrow from some distance away. So, it's still too early to fall asleep, is it? Jin Wu summoned the poison fang of Kasaka once more and stood back up. Crunch. One single punch caused the knight's breastplate to crack and cave in. The lifeless monster slowly slid to the ground in between Jin Wu's stretched fist and the wall. It didn't move again as it lay sprawled on the ground, to tie a ring. You defeated the knight. Level up. Although it was quite unfortunate that his condition didn't recover, his levels continued to rise up steadily as he fought more and more battles. Jin Wu looked down on his slightly skinned fist and clicked his tongue. Only a short break would have taken care of such a small wound by now. However, these abominable monsters didn't give him a moment to rest. Still, he earned quite a lot in the meantime. Equipped items. Gatekeeper's necklace. A. Superior. Knight's breastplate. B. Intermediate assassin's shoes. B. Inferior archer's gloves. C. Superior mage's ring. B. Other useful things he found along the way were now all safely tucked away in his inventory. It had been nicer if I found a weapon, though. What an unfortunate thing it was. The daggers used by the assassins featured similar levels of attack damage bonus, as the poison fang of Kasaka. But none of them possessed additional effects, so they were deemed not as good compared to his current weapon. What would this guy give me now? Jin Wu reached out towards the fallen knight and the flickering light coming off from it. T-Ring. Item, Superior Knight's Gauntlet. Rarity, B-Type. Armor reduction in physical damage, par 3%. Additional effects, prevents injuries to wearer's hands. Your movement will slow down if your strength is below 80. Oh! With a bright smile, Jin Wu quickly acquired the Superior Knight's Gauntlet and equipped it immediately. Just like with all the other items, these metallic gloves didn't affect him in the slightest, and he could freely move his fingers. Nice. 
Jinwoo moved his fingers around for a bit before raising his head to look at the far side of the passageway. Finally, the torchlight revealed the end of the road, and that end was blocked off by a huge castle gate. It was quite rare to see the boss room with a door like that. Naturally, he recalled the dual dungeon. No one was adequately prepared back then, and because of that, the losses incurred were great. However, it was different now. Jin Wu took a look behind him, at the passage he had been walking on to get here. It took me six hours to get here, too. His level was now forty-five, and he was kitted out in some good armor as well. He was ready. He wouldn't have minded taking a small break and recover some of his spent stamina. But whenever he tried to do that, monsters always managed to appear with the perfect sense of timing to disrupt his sleep. He couldn't afford to summon more monsters and waste his energy that way. HP 4511830, MP 66790, Tiredness 43. I gotta win with this. Finishing up with confirming his condition for the last time, Jin Wu reached out and grasped the handles of the doors. Creak, creak. The heavy looking doors slid open rather smoothly, as if there was some Chapter sort of an 48. Un Rumble. Boom. The door to the boss room finally opened. The interior was completely shrouded in darkness. Even with Jin Wu's eyesight, greatly enhanced by his perception stat, he found it hard to see one inch in front of him. All he could see clearly was the ground beneath his feet. The floor was covered in stone tiles. The ash-colored tiles, laid with no visible gaps in between, gave off this feeling of heaviness and barren chill. As soon as he set foot on this floor, whoosh! Countless torches lining up the walls lit up all at once and illuminated the interior. As I thought, it's almost the same as back in that underground temple. Jin Wu maintained his vigilance. He scanned his vicinity and cautiously stepped forward. Several giant stone pillars stood erect to his left and right. At the far end of this room, he could see a tall throne. It's as if... This place reminded him of the king's audience chamber from a fantasy movie. Of course. The scale was noticeably larger, though. A few steps later, the door issued a loud bang and closed shut behind him. Slam! Jin Wu glanced back, but he didn't panic. He already expected something like that to happen. Jin Wu resumed his careful march forward. I can sense a powerful presence. He kind of got this really strong gut feeling that, in order to conclude his class quest, he had to arrive before that throne. Just as important, his gut feelings on matters such as this one were on the money most of the time. It was then. From the gap between stone pillars, which couldn't have been more than ten steps, a doll walked out from its hiding spot and stood before him, blocking his path forward. The thing stopped its walk and turned around to face him. Gulp. Jinwoo swallowed his dry saliva. He only had to take one look at the creature's red name floating just above its head to know that the boss had finally made its entrance. The Captain of the Knights, Igret the Crimson. It was a knight wearing a suit of blood-red armor. The way it was kitted out from head to toe in metal armor was similar to other knights he fought so far, but quite unlike those that looked dull and slow, this thing looked incredibly agile. What caught his eyes next was its helm. The red-colored mane extending rearwards from the top of the helm reminded him of a stallion's tail, and it left a rather deep impression. While he studied its helm, Jin Wu discovered one more difference between it and the other knights. This guy... has eyes? But, were they eyes? Or irises? Whatever the case may be, the pair of silvery lights oozed out from where one's eyes should be. They felt so cold and uncaring utterly mechanical and lifeless. Those cold eyes were now fixed on him. The hair on the back of his neck stood up. So, the aura of the really powerful enemy was coming from this guy, huh? The goal of the class quest could be to defeat this knight, for all he knew. If that was the case, he needed to be doubly cautious. Jin Wu observed the movements of this agrit while slowly raising his clenched fists. My dagger won't work on it anyway. What was needed in defeating a knight was blunt force. He needed strength to overwhelm him. Egret quietly observed Jin Wu for a while, before it abruptly took off its red cape. Plop. The cape fell to the floor. What's it doing? 
The B-Star's strange actions didn't end there. It proceeded to take off the longsword on its hips, and the two daggers hidden behind its back, and dropped them all to the ground. Not only that, it showed them to him, before dropping them one at a time. Clang, clang. The interior of the boss room had been quiet until then. The loud clangs of the metal hitting the stone tiles reverberated noisily throughout this vast chamber. Igret finished discarding all of its weapons, and as if to imitate Jin Wu, clenched its fists and got into a fighting stance. Jin Wu's eyes grew wider. Could this beast starred be thinking of... <sighs> was this thing going to fight him barehanded because he was also barehanded? Jin Wu bit his lower lip. It's looking down on me. The monster's provocation that really wasn't one only served to rapidly cool his head. The hotter his emotions boiled, the colder his head got. On the contrary to his heart beating faster and faster, Jin Wu's eyes became sharper and calculating. Come. Perhaps reading his mind, Igrit made a beeline towards him. Tap, 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 tap. The speed it produced was so fast that he found it hard to believe it was wearing a suit of armor. The speed penalty of the armors only comes into effect when the strength stat is lower than 80, right? Meaning, this thing's strength was at least 80. Judging from its nimble movement, its agility would also rival some of the highest-ranked hunters out there. Igrit closed the distance in the blink of an eye and leapt up into the air. Once flying, the thing stuck its knee out and aimed at Jin Wu's face. It's fast! However, Jin Wu had been ready as well. His own movement speed pushed to the extreme. He bent his back almost 90 degrees and let Igrit's attack brush past him. Jin Wu then rapidly stood back up. Quite unlike other knights that needed some distance to stop after their tackle had failed, Igrit simply landed on the ground without much fanfare. Kung! There was no time to admire that perfect landing, though. Jin Wu rushed in, and before Egret could turn around all the way, he diagonally kicked its head. Shockingly enough, the thing still could move its arm accurately, even when its posture was unstable. Slam! Jin Wu's right leg was easily blocked by Igrit's left hand. How can this be? Jin Wu's eyes opened wider. While one of his legs was blocked, Igrit's other fist flew in at his face. Swish! He raised both of his arms instinctively to guard himself, but the impact force still got transmitted to the rest of his body. Boom. His guard broke and his entire body became airborne. What? A shocked gasp escaped from his mouth, but soon it turned into a groan. Because Igrit had already appeared right in front of his eyes, even before he had the chance to do something about it, Igrit's left fist powerfully slammed into Jin Wu's left cheek. Slam. He slammed into the floor and bounced up from the impact, before continuing to roll away. He only managed to force himself back up after a while. Buzz! The inside of his ears rang noisily. Jin Wu shook his head around a couple of times. Only then did the loud ringing die down somewhat. However, the much bigger problem than that was coming closer to him. His blurry sight captured Igret as it walked towards him. Step. Step. Jin Wu opened his eyes wider and got ready. Eventually, Igret arrived right before Jin Wu's nose, and so, a bloody dogfight erupted between the two. Igret didn't even try to dodge Jin Wu's punches. No, it simply took on the hits and counterattacked right away. Pow. Igret's head was forced slightly to the side, but even before Jin Wu could correct his posture, a sharp and accurate counterpunch flew at him. Pow! Jin Wu tottered about like a drunken man. Pow! This time, Igret took a step back. Pow! After his stomach was kicked in, Jin Wu's body bent forward 90 degrees. Kiok! Blood welled up in his mouth. What is this nonsensical bull shot? Currently, Jin Wu's physical damage reduction stat had exceeded 30%. However, each of Igret's attacks hurt like crazy, as if he was being pounded on by a hammer. On the other hand, his attacks almost didn't inflict any damage to the enemy. Their exchange didn't last for long afterwards. Pow! Jin Wu teetered about unsteadily before falling to his knees. Plop. He tried to stand back up, but his legs didn't want to listen. Plop. Ooh, yuk. Igret stood before Jin Wu but stopped attacking him. It wordlessly stared down at him for a while. Then, while ignoring Jin Wu's question filled gaze directed at it, Egret extended its hand out towards the sword discarded to the ground some distance away. Then, the sword was automatically reeled in. 
Egret grasped the sword in both of its hands and walked to the side of Jin Wu. Soon, the tip of the blade was pointing to the sky. You want to execute me, is that it? This bastard certainly lived up to its title as the captain of the knights. When it looked like Jin Wu wasn't going to resist his final moments, Igret went ahead with the execution. Of course, Jin Wu wasn't going to let that happen without a fight. The sword fell down in a straight line. Swish. However, Jin Wu reached up with his left hand and blocked the descending blade. Clang. The noise of metal hitting metal. The gauntlet he found just before entering here protected his hand. Flinch. He sensed Igret being taken back just now. Jin Wu didn't miss this chance and threw a punch with his right hand. As expected, Igret didn't try to dodge. You're thinking of countering me again, right? It had probably calculated that getting hit once while countering that was far more productive. Too bad. It failed to take something important into its calculation. Poison Fang of Kasaka. Shururu. The Poison Fang of Kasaka was summoned instantly into his hand, and Jin Wu stabbed the dagger in the creature's eye. Stab. kuo -ar. A scream that couldn't have come from a human being exploded out. At the same time, a fierce light poured out from the eye with the dagger sticking out. Jin Wu hurriedly stood back up. Now what? Just damaging one eye wouldn't be able to determine the winner of this battle. He needed an attack even more powerful than that if he wanted to win. It was then, a thought entered his mind. The horrifying attack that almost pushed him to the brink of death the other day. He wanted to let Igrit taste that attack too. Before he could finish thinking that, his body moved first. Jin Wu bent down and bear-hugged Igrit's midriff. And then, he began running. Kuark! Igrit thrashed about in pain and managed to land several solid blows on Jin Wu's back. However, he gritted his teeth and didn't let Igrit go. No, he increased his speed instead. Dash! Your movement speed has increased by 40%. Jin Wu's legs were now moving so much faster. He felt the electrifying speed sending chills down his entire body. Yes, this is it. And now... And now, he'd slam this beastard. While gripping the midriff of Igrit even harder, he dashed towards the nearest wall with every ounce of energy he had. Of course, if they collided against the wall at this speed, the impact his own body received would be substantial as well. However, Jin Wu had a hidden trump card in the form of a certain passive skill. The distance closed in the blink of an eye. The wall was right behind them. Kaboom! Along with the huge explosion, Egret crashed into the wall. At the same time, a message from the system popped up. T.I. Ring, your HP has dropped below 30% and skill, tenacity has been activated. All damage received will be reduced by 50%. The impact force was great enough for the entire boss room to tremble momentarily. Kyuk. Jin Wu took a step back. Egret was buried halfway into the wall, yet it was still alive. The flame of life burning under the helm was still flickering visibly. I need to finish this. Jin Wu yanked the poison fang of Kasaka, still buried in its eye, loose. That caused Egret's body to quiver once. Jin Wu held the dagger in a reverse grip and stabbed hard at the bystard's neck. Vital points targeting! Clang! The attack failed to work. One more time. Vital points targeting! Clang! Sparks flew off from the tip of the dagger. A small nick formed on the metal covering the monster's neck. One more time. Vital points targeting! Clang! One more! Clang! One more! Clang! And finally, vital points targeting! Crack! The poison fang of Kasaka broke past the protective metal and dug deep into its neck. You defeated the captain of the knights, Igret the Crimson. Level up! Level up! Jin Wu raised both of his hands up high into the sky. He took several steps back before losing all strength in his legs and faltered to the floor. Pant! Pant! Jin Wu spat out the heavy breaths he'd been holding in until now. He won somehow. It was an incredibly close fight. However, wasn't this the end of the quest? Jin Wu collected his breaths for a long time before painfully raising his body up. He expected the class quest to end once he killed this guy, but not one message popped up in his view. He looked around, but he failed to spot anything different in the boss room. No, there was one thing that was different from before. 
several strands of light began flickering on Igrit's body, meaning his loot was now ready. For the time being, let's grab those. After all, he couldn't tell what else might happen here. Grabbing things that he could grab when there was a chance was the smartest move one could make, wasn't it? Jin Wu reached out towards those lights. Item. Red Knight's helm has been found. Take it. Runestone. Ruler's reach has been found. Take it. Item. Leather pouch has been found. Take it. Item. Immediate return stone has been found. Take it. Why were there so many? Jin Wu felt rather puzzled, but still, he couldn't hide his elation either. Acquire them all. The first thing to enter his inventory was the leather pouch. Item, leather pouch has been opened. One five hundred thousand gold is inside. One five hundred thousand gold has been acquired. Jin Wu's eyes went extra round. The level of reward is on another scale altogether. It definitely was worth it, defeating it after going through so much crap. He wasn't expecting all that much to begin with. Yet, the leather pouch spat out an unbelievable amount of 1,000 and 500,000 gold. With this amount, he'd be able to buy something useful from the store now. However, Jin Wu's attention was directed elsewhere at the moment. If the leather pouch he didn't even hold high hopes for managed to produce such wealth, then just how high was the value of the helm or the runestone? Jin Wu tried very hard to calm his heart and brought up the information on the helm. Tai Ring. Item. Red Knight's Helm. Rarity. S-Type. Armor reduction in physical damage. Plus 115% stamina. Plus 20. Strength plus was in 20. It's an S! Jin Wu cried out in elation. Chapter 49. For the first time ever, an item with a rarity ranking of S showed up. Just the effect of 15% reduction in physical damage alone would have made it a top-tier item. Yet it even possessed two more remarkable additional attributes of raising the stamina and strength stats by 20 points each. Just seeing those options alone made his heart palpitate so much faster. The rarity. Uh, items can't even compare to it. He had acquired two A-ranked items up until now. The first was the Poison Sack of Kasaka, the one he got after he defeated the snake Blue Kasaka, the second one being the Gatekeeper's Necklace after he defeated the Cerberus. Those two items were already quite excellent. The Poison Sack had the terrible penalty of stealing 35 points from his strength stat, but its effect also decreased the physical damage taken by 20%. What about the Gatekeeper's Necklace, then? It was one of the best items out there that increased both agility and perception stats by 20 each, two stats he now knew the importance of. But the Red Knight's Helm possessed the kind of buffing effect that combined both of those items, and without any penalty, to boot. No need to mention it. It's the best. He was fully aware of the fact that he was standing in the middle of the dungeon's boss room, yet the smile on his face didn't want to go away. And if he were to add in one more unnecessary point here, he even liked the helm's design. It's a bit of a pity to hide this thing, though. The crimson helm that immediately reminded all onlookers of the flowing blood, and the mane connected to the helm itself, made him feel like he was holding an artistic masterpiece. It was only for a brief moment, but he even felt compelled to put on the full set of this armor, if it existed somewhere. However, what a waste. Igrit's other armor pieces weren't considered to be loot, as there were no lights coming off from them. Only the helm could be taken away. Jin Wu forced back a rueful smile and cautiously put on the helm. Poof. Just as always, the helm disappeared from the view immediately. Although he couldn't show off his new look, his stats had gained a huge boost thanks to his new headwear. Stats, Strength, 128, Pawning 20. Stamina, 87, Pawning 20. Agility, 107, Intelligence, 66, Perception, 89, Reduction in Physical Damage, 46%, plus 115%. The numbers appearing in brackets were the increases in his stats from the helm itself. Not only the Strength and Stamina stats, but the hard-to-increase damage reduction stat all enjoyed massive boosts. He was completely and utterly satisfied now. Having confirmed the increase with his own two eyes, his heart began beating even faster. No, no, no! Jin Wu quickly shook his head. The quest isn't over yet, so let's calm down. Besides, he still had other items to sort out too. With the trace of excitement still lingering in his mind, 
Jin Wu shifted his gaze to the other two items. Rune Stone. Ruler's Reach. Item. Immediate Return Stone. Two pieces of stones. Out of the two walnut-sized stones, the first one to grab his curious gaze was the immediate return stone. I know what is a rune stone, but this... Just what could this immediate return stone do? His curiosity got resolved pretty quickly, however. The information on the immediate return stone floated up right away. Titty ring. Item. Immediate return stone. Rarity. Type. Consumable. An item exclusive to this class change quest. When destroyed, you'll be transported outside the dungeon immediately. However, once the class change quest has been concluded, it will automatically be destroyed. Can't be stored in the inventory. The way to use it was similar to a rune stone. However, to think that its effect wasn't about absorbing a new skill, but to escape from this dungeon. Hang on a sec. The class change quest isn't over yet? If that were the case, then this particular item should have been destroyed already. Since it hadn't, that could only mean... For some reason, he felt a creeping chill slowly caress his spine. What an odd sensation that was. He had received one of the best items out there that could help him make his escape from this dungeon. Yet why was he getting this incredibly bad premonition right now? If this stone could be used in regular dungeons, and not only inside the system-generated ones, then just about everyone alive would try to buy this thing. Seriously. This stone would be the same as having a surefire way to save their lives, so no one should be foolish enough to pinch pennies when trying to get their hands on one. It was the same with Jin Wu too. Just this item alone should decrease the burden of this quest by a great deal. If I so choose, he'd be able to escape at any time. However, the ominous feeling taking root in the corner of his mind didn't want to go away, no matter what. And, sure enough, the warning beep from the system went off in his head as if it was waiting for this moment. T.I. Ring. Player has acquired the immediate return stone. The class change quest will now commence. Son of a bitch. So, this was the item to start the quest for real. He nearly fainted on the spot. He felt like he had stepped on something he shouldn't have in the first place. If I knew this might happen, I'd have taken a short break first. What would regret do for him now? No matter how much one relied on one's experience and knowledge to predict the future, one would never be able to correctly guess the tricks of fate. A strand of cold sweat dripped down from Jin Wu's forehead. Jin Wu summoned the status window inwardly and confirmed the remaining HP and his fatigue level. HP 4161 Fon 027 Arrow MP 390 850 Tiredness 61 The tiredness stat is a bit on the high side, but I can still do this. The helm's added effects enhanced his stamina stat by a lot, which meant that his overall endurance had increased greatly as well, and his remaining HP had risen up as an added bonus too. What a relief that was. As if to encourage himself, Jin Wu continued to tell himself that, I can still do this. It's not impossible. Of course, his life should not be in any imminent danger, because he held the immediate return stone after all. However, no matter how hard he thought about it, this immediate return stone sounded awfully like an item that signified him giving up on the quest. If that was not the case, then it shouldn't have been the quest starting item to begin with. If I give up on this quest, wouldn't it be the same as him giving up on this chance to get his class? The cold sweat on his forehead rolled past his temple and down to his chin, before dripping down. Gulp. Just as he swallowed a bit of dry spit and his Adam's apple bobbed up and down, the system's new message popped up in his view. Tie ring. In ten seconds, dimensional doorways will be randomly generated. Dimensional doorways? Even before his question could be cleared up, huge numbers appeared up in the middle of the air. Shechum likes. He could easily tell what that was. It most likely was signifying the countdown. Meanwhile, the messages continued on. Player has a choice. You can escape from the dungeon by using the immediate return stone, or 876. The timer continued to tick down to zero. Or endure as long as you can and earn as many advancement points as possible in order to access the higher ranked classes. Endure? Endure what exactly? 
he ended up shouting out loudly as his frustration mounted. However, Jin Wu was already holding the poison fang of Kasaka summoned from his inventory. He stored the rune stone inside the inventory, while the immediate return stone was placed inside the back of his pocket since it couldn't be stored there. Even though his heart beat fast and hard enough to nearly explode, he didn't forget to get ready for the battle that was about to come. That was how Seong Jin Wu operated. The class change quest will soon commence. Four, three, two. Jin Wu anxiously glared at the time and quickly scanned his surroundings. His head and eyes darted around quickly, over here and over there. Something ominous was clearly getting ready to begin. The space around him was separating and twisting visibly to his eyes. Gulak 401. I wish you the best of luck. What? For the first time ever, the system expressed emotion. Too bad, he had no time to stew inside his shock. The moment the timer hit zero, several gates began forming all around him. Buzz. Woong. Not just one or two, either. He first spotted six around him. The number continued to climb up even higher, however. And at the same time, the timer began ticking upwards. Shantorn 2. The countdown began again. The time would become his so-called advancement points. He hadn't understood everything the system said, but still, he did figure out some parts of it. The longer I endure, the stronger I will get. No, more specifically, he'd instead get a powerful class. There was no way he'd throw away a golden opportunity like this. He also had some wiggle room left with his HP and MP. Let's endure as long as I can. Allah Shah. 3. When the timer hit exactly three seconds, weaponless knights poured out from the nearest gate. Thud, 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 thud. When the knights decked out in full armor formed silver-colored waves, the ground couldn't help but tremor from the weight. The momentum these things displayed would have been enough to overwhelm most people, but there was a smile floating up onto Jin Wu's lips instead. If it's these guys, I can definitely fight them. In a way, he was oh so glad to see them as his opponents. If the monsters coming out from the gates happened to be as strong as Igret, then he wouldn't even be able to last a couple of seconds. Stealth. Jin Wu used some part of the remaining MP and activated the skill Stealth. For the time being, I should observe what's happening here first. Jin Wu's form blurred and slowly disappeared. As expected, the knights rushing towards him all came to an abrupt halt. However, the mage has used skill, eyes of detection. The crisp titai ring of the warning beep resounded in his head. Jin Wu's head snapped in the direction of the beep. What was that? He spotted a mage that had just emerged from the gate chanting a spell. That's also when Jin Wu discovered an eye, like symbol, floating above the head of the mage. The moment that eye flashed, in that moment, Jin Wu's stealth was cancelled. Fuck! From the get-go, his calculation proved to be way off the mark. Snap. Snap. The knights that stood around like telephone poles snapped their heads all at once towards Jin Wu's direction. It was a scene straight out of a horror movie. And soon enough, the silver waves pounced on him. Jin Wu's eyes opened wider and he gritted his teeth. Boom! His punch blew away the head of the incoming knight. That guy died where it stood. You defeated the knight. Crazed lights shone in Jin Wu's eyes. Intimidation? Skill. Intimidation has been activated. Effect. Fear has been activated. The target's all stats will decrease by 50% for one minute. The movements of the monsters became much duller through the effects of fear, but his mana fell down to 90 points. The intimidation required 100 MP in order to activate. He wouldn't be able to use it the second time. However, I just bought myself a minute. Intending to use this precious minute to the best of his abilities as the monsters were noticeably weakened, Jin Wu began wailing on them with everything he had. Boom, crack, kaboom, slam. With a terrifying momentum, he proceeded to utterly dismantle the knights. Boom, slam, crack. Too bad the speed of him defeating knights was far inferior to the rate of the replacement knights popping out from the gates. Rumble. Even in the midst of the maddened battle, Jin Wu sneaked a glance at the timer. Surda 0319. 
It had only been 3 minutes and 19 seconds. If that was converted into points, how much would he get? Wouldn't it be fine for him to leave this place now? However, he didn't have any leeway to dwell on that matter. Even while he was thinking to himself, knights were continuously pouring out from the gates like unstoppable waves. He managed to destroy countless knights, yet he simply couldn't deal with so many of them. Wah! In the end, Jinwu was buried in the Sea of Knights. Passive skill. Tenacity has been activated. Passive skill. Tenacity has been activated. His HP was in a freefall now, and eventually, it hit rock bottom. HP, 1036.0270. The time is... Sort of five, eight, five minutes and eight seconds. He had endured enough, hadn't he? Let's get out of here. Now completely entrapped among the knights, Jin Wu flailed about helplessly in this silver prison and dug through his back pocket. However, drop. The immediate return stone slipped out from his grasp and fell to the floor. And the roundish stone hit the sole of one of the knights and rolled away far from him. No! Jin Wu hurriedly reached out towards the stone, but the knights blocked him. Soon, knights piled up on top of him too. It became almost impossible to breathe in an instant. Passive skill, tenacity, has been activated. Passive skill, tenacity, has been activated. His consciousness began to blur. Pow. Pow. He continuously got struck by the knights while trapped below them, and as his mind began to grow dimmer, he thought he heard a snarky cackle coming from somewhere. You have brought this upon yourself, remember that. Why did you risk it all when there was a safe path for you to follow? Isn't it already a huge break for a rank E hunter to become a C, or even a B? Well, in the end, this was as far as you could go. Shut up. Remember, you killed yourself today. Shut the hell up. Qua boom. The knights surrounding and pressing down on Jin Wu were suddenly all blown away. Even though he somehow managed to crawl out from death, his eyes were burning with life. As a matter of fact, his eyes were burning with a stubborn will and sheer malice. I won't let it end like this. He earned this opportunity after going through so much. So, how could he let it end like this? Never. Because he was stuck at the very bottom for so long, he yearned to be on top more than anyone else. He knew the sorrow of the weak better than anyone. He tried everything to survive. And when he did survive, others kept pointing fingers at him. How will a rank E be of any help here? The association is being way too much. They should have dispatched someone who could actually lend a bit of help, but that guy is... Ah, uh, phew. That B-starred, maybe he keeps surviving by hiding behind his colleagues every time. So, how could he simply watch and do nothing, when a ladder that could take him to the very top was put in front of his eyes? What a rubbish notion that was. I remember now that voice ringing around his head just now. That voice belonged to those beastards, the voice that always yapped on and on from behind his back. Fine, laugh all you want. I'll struggle on until the bitter end. It's fine if my HP drops to 10, no, one. I'll struggle and struggle on like crazy, right until the end. I'll fight until I won't be able to move anymore. Ooh! -ah! Jinwoo threw his body forward, crack. He thrust forward another punch. A knight's breastplate caved in, and the monster flew away. Other knights collided with it and they all fell on their butts. But then, more knights rushed in again. Jin Wu's movements became a step more violent in response. Crack, boom, slam. Without an exception, knights colliding with Jin Wu's body parts, be that his fist, elbow, knee, feet, were all destroyed like a bunch of paper dolls. Tiredness has exceeded 70 points. Your movement is being restricted. Just as the warning message said, his movements became duller. However, the malice and anger in Jin Wu's eyes didn't weaken in the slightest. One by one, the knights he couldn't defeat in one hit slammed into him. Jin Wu resorted to hitting them three, four times and made sure to destroy them. Eight, seven, six, five. In the meantime, a strange countdown was silently ticking down. He was too focused on the battle so he failed to notice it before the timer had reached the single digit. What's this? 
Is the quest coming to an end? A small ray of hope blossomed in his head for a brief moment, but it turned out to be nothing but a useless dream. Bruce 6, 27. The quest timer was still ticking up as it's supposed to. No. Something separate from this timer was counting down one second at a time. Four, t three, two. Is it to show me the time of my death? Indeed, the system did tell him this way back then. It told him that, if he didn't accept becoming a player, he'd die 0 0.02 seconds later. Fine. Jinwoo glared fiercely. I'll gladly use up every moment, right down to the final second. Slam. Crack. Two more knights were destroyed in the meantime. Unlike Jinwoo's unyielding stubbornness, though, his entire body was now riddled with all sorts of wounds. It progressively much harder to lift his arms. His weakened fist wasn't enough to stop the knight's tackles and charges anymore. From the front, one. From the back, another one. Slam! Jin Wu was sandwiched powerfully by the two knights slamming into him from the front and back, and he spat out a pained groan. Kiok! Other knights pounced on him as if they didn't want to miss this chance. In the blink of an eye, Jin Wu was buried under the masses of knights and couldn't even lift a finger. Rumble. Even during that, more knights continued to pile on top of Jin Wu. The silver waves had transformed into a silver mountain instead. Jin Wu's breathing became incredibly harsh. Pant! Pant! At this rate, he'd be asphyxiated to death first. Jin Wu's hand somehow broke out from the gaps of the knights and helplessly pointed towards the sky. HP 93 Konsu Ver. He was in a truly desperate situation. Even then, Jin Wu did not give up, though. No, not yet. I can still go on. Just as Jin Wu managed to clench the hand pointing at the sky, the mysterious countdown ticking down finally announced its conclusion. One, zero. You've failed to complete the daily quest. You'll be transferred to the penalty zone. Chapter 50 Jin Wu doubted his own hearing just then. Penalty zone? Ah, he then remembered it. He didn't do the daily quest for today. He was planning on confirming the results of his constant leveling up, and to help him decide whether he was ready to tackle the demon's castle or not. Who could have guessed that things might unfold in this manner? Rumble! Just like back in the hospital, everything began to violently shake. Plop. Plop. The knights piling on top of Jin Wu turned into figures of sand one by one. The world surrounding him was changing. Ha! Ha 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 ha! Jin Wu soundlessly laughed to himself. For some reason, the words the system spoke to him before the beginning of the quest circled around inside his head. I wish you the best of luck. Was it trying to imply that the quest itself was unimaginably hard, to the point that he needed luck to complete it? Or was it implying that it'd cheer him on, as he resorted to borrowing the power of luck and earn a ton of advancement points that way? Luck, coincidence, whatever it was called, he didn't care. No matter what it was, his chance had come. The important thing was how he'd go about utilizing that. Rumble! The tremor was getting worse. Rather than wasting time trying to stabilize himself, Jin Wu entrusted his body to the tremor and closed his eyes. Let's not get agitated here. When he did that, he felt airborne and weightless, and all sound vanished from his hearing. When he reopened his eyes, he found himself in the middle of the endless sea of sand. Jin Wu plopped down, face first. Care Hio Eok, pant, pant, pant. His fingers dug into the desert sand as the held up breaths exploded out of his mouth. Fresh air entered and flowed into every corner of his body via his lungs. Finally, I feel alive. The sense of relief wrapped Jin Wu up tightly as he rolled onto his back. He could see the black sky above with nothing in it. The endless expanse of the pitch-black ceiling was the only thing his eyes could capture. This place looked exactly the same as the penalty zone from his memories. Wait. I shouldn't be wasting time like this. He had forgotten that this place was not a safe zone either, since he just made a miraculous escape from a comparably far worse area. But Jin Wu couldn't be arried into standing up anytime soon. So while lying on his back, he summoned the status window. HP 
MP-2102-850. Tiredness, 91. He was wondering why it was so difficult to move his body, but as it turned out, the demon of tiredness stat was over 90. This is probably my first time that stat has gone past 90, right? He really didn't want to even lift a finger here. His health was one thing, but he figured that lowering his fatigue took priority. Store. Tati ring. Two words, buy and sell, popped up in the air. Although the layout of this store imparted not one hint of sincerity, no matter how kind he looked at it, he found it such a welcoming sight right now. He picked out the most expensive healing potion on sale. As soon as he confirmed the purchase, shururu. A glass bottle containing red liquid appeared on his wide open palm. Jin Wu laboriously popped the cork open and poured the potion down his mouth. Gulp, gulp. The red liquid traveled down his throat and entered deep into his body. Your fatigue is recovering. Your fatigue is recovering. Your fatigue is recovering. Maybe because it was the most expensive potion, just one bottle was enough to lower the tiredness value at a visible rate. However, for some reason, his HP value didn't change at all. HP 106 10270 MP 204 850 Tiredness 0 Even after he finished the whole bottle, his HP didn't recover. It was such a noticeable contrast to his tiredness stat hitting zero. Why is it doing this? Only after he completely drained the bottle did he finally get to understand the reason for this anomaly. T-Ring When your remaining HP is less than 10%, it is impossible to heal yourself with healing potions. What a simple reason, that his remaining HP was too low. Of course, even healing magic had its limitations. It was not a foreign concept to him. Just as a healer's ranking determined the scope of their healing capabilities, potions too couldn't heal past a certain limit. And that limit is 10%, huh? He learned something important today. He might have landed in really hot water during a critical moment by believing potions could solve everything. This was why experiencing it firsthand was important. Well, there was an old saying, wasn't there? Things that couldn't kill him would make him stronger. That perfectly illustrated the usefulness of personal experience. And thankfully, Jin Wu possessed experience regarding the penalty zone. I'm sure they should pop up right about now. And just as he expected, he sensed the presence of life forms beneath the surface. Jin Wu tightly shrunk his body for a second before springing up to his feet. His entire body felt as light as feather. His strength had returned in full, thanks to the potion. Standing straight on his feet, Jin Wu turned around and took a look. Just as he expected, the spot he was lying on a second ago began caving in, and a crater formed there. Back then, I thought I'd die if I slipped and fell in there. But now, he had so much leeway that he was actually spectating on the whole process with some leisure. At the very bottom of the sandy crater, the ground began to boil and tremble about before, PUSHWI! The sand exploded up like a pillar and the huge centipede revealed itself. Kiek! Everything matched up to his memory so far. And I found this thing so terrifying to look at back then too. But now, he couldn't help feeling like he was looking at some video footage being played in slow motion. Jin Wu raised his eyes a bit higher. And he got to clearly confirm those red letters floating above the centipede's head. Poison Fanged Giant Desert Centipede. Its name was in red letters, the same color as the Cerberus from the Demon's Castle. It was then the quest message appeared before his eyes. Tay Ring, Penalty Quest, Survival. Goal. Please survive until the end of the time limit. Time limit. Four hours. Remaining. Time. Four hours. Zero minutes. Zero seconds. Confirming the details of the message, Jin Wu clenched his fist tightly. I can buy myself time with this. Since he hadn't used the immediate return stone to escape from the dungeon, he still had a shot here. I'm pretty sure that, as soon as the penalty quest is over, I will be sent back to that place. What if time spent inside the penalty zone was acknowledged as the time he endured during the quest? His advancement points tally would be enormous. He couldn't even imagine just what kind of an impact that would have. However, however, when he thought back to how the system affected him every day, 
he was sure of this becoming something absolutely huge. Four hours. He couldn't even endure ten minutes and tried to use the immediate return stone, yet simply by transferring into the penalty zone, he now got himself four hours for free. There was one issue he still had to resolve first, however, and that would be whether he could get out of this place unscathed, with only one hundred or so HP remaining. As it was impossible to heal himself using potions, he had to do his best to cautiously kill these centipedes until he leveled up. It was kind of like a new mission for him. Let's do this. Jin Wu summoned the poison fang of Kasaka. And then, remaining time. Yo 3, 59, 59. Then, as soon as the penalty quest began, he dashed forward, even before the centipede had the chance to move. Jin Wu closed the distance in the blink of an eye and lightly leapt up right in front of the centipede. Pot! He landed on one of the legs near the midpoint of the centipede, and, as he made his way up, Jin Wu proceeded to inflict several injuries on the body of the monster. Stab! 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 On all the spots the reverse-gripped poison fang of Kasaka brushed past, flesh split open, and bodily fluid poured out. Keek! The centipede roared out and thrashed about as if each wound inflicted was too painful to bear. Dash! Jin Wu's sprinting legs became even faster. Step, 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 step. Jin Wu deftly treaded on the centipede's body and arrived at the top of its head only a second later. He gripped the dagger with both of his hands and raised it up high. And then... Vital points targeting. He used his skill and stabbed down on the centipede's head with every ounce of his power. The downward pointing blade dug deep into the flesh of the centipede's head. Crack. Skill. Vital points targeting has leveled up. Nice. What a wonderful piece of news to show up in such a long time. The damage from the leveled up vital points targeting must have been pretty substantial, because the centipede shook its head around quite violently and thrashed about in great pain. Kick! Kiesk! Jin Wu didn't stop there. He stepped away from its head and moved to its back because he saw a completely unguarded body part to attack. Stab! Jin Wu stabbed the dagger deep into the monster's back flesh, and by using gravity, he fell to the ground while holding onto his weapon. SFX for Centipede's back, splitting up. The power from the strength stat exceeding 120 points, as well as the helping hand of gravity added on top as he fell from the height of a five-story building, caused the centipede's back to split open quite splendidly. Tap. Jin Wu landed on the ground without any trouble. Kiek! Ki! The centipede spewed out its bodily fluids everywhere. Its giant body thrashed and quivered before it slowly crashed on the ground. Boom! The huge body of the centipede landed and kicked up the dust cloud. T.I. Ring. You defeated the poison fanged giant desert centipede. Jin Wu dusted himself off while checking out the remaining time. Remaining time. Zo 3, 59, 42. I spent 17 seconds. He didn't even need 20 seconds to kill a single centipede. It was a complete contrast to when he was fighting the Cerberus, ostensibly on the same level as this centipede. He had become unbelievably strong now. Well, yeah. I've leveled up so many times since then, and just how many items did I get my hands on in the meantime? It was a rather obvious conclusion. He now felt confident of hunting other centipedes down without getting hurt if these monsters posed such a little threat. Now then, my problem would be the number of monsters in this place that I can hunt to reach my next level. That would be the only way to raise his odds of his victory when he got thrown back into the class quest. If he went back without having recovered his HP, only a dog's death would be waiting for him there. It was at this point when... More sand pillars began erupting out from the ground. Pushui, pushui. It seemed that quite a lot of centipedes rushed over here after picking up on the scent of the blood from its dead kin. Kiyik, kiyik. Almost immediately, Jin Wu's expression brightened. Just how many are here? Seeing all those centipedes poking their heads out from the sandy surface, Jin Wu could no longer suppress the wide smile from blooming on his face. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. As the result of wrestling around with these centipedes for the past four hours, his level rose up four times, 
and now it sat at 51. Before he knew it, the penalty quest was coming to an end. Penalty quest, survival. Goal. Please survive until the end of the time limit. Time limit, 4 hours, remaining time, 0 hours, 3 minutes, 19 seconds. Soon, he'd have to go back. Jin Wu took a sweeping look around him. The corpses of centipedes filled up his view everywhere he looked. Thanks to them, he got to recover his HP back to full. It's a bit of waste that these things don't give any loot or gold. Well, it'd be strange that loot would come out when he was supposed to get punished in this place. He stopped worrying about that and got ready instead. Store. Current gold. 3,115. Sitsinks 29. Humanoid-type monsters dropped the gold-containing leather pouch really often, and also, Igret also gave him 1.5 million gold in one go. So, he now had enough funds to spend. Jin Wu spent all that gold to buy one single weapon. As a matter of fact, there was this one dagger that caught his eye. Item. Night Killer. Rarity. B-type. Dagger Attack. Plus 75. A sharp and sturdy dagger designed to cut through the armor worn by the knights. The edges of the blade are shaped like the teeth of a saw blade. Thus it won't slide off the armor's surface easily. Effect. Killing Knights. Plum 25% additional damage when attacking heavily armored opponents. It was a specially crafted weapon to deal with armor-wearing enemies. And it cost 2.8 million gold. He had to spend almost every gold he had in reserve to buy this weapon, but he didn't have any leeway to shed a tear over it. It's not like I can take the gold with me to the grave anyway. He didn't hesitate, and bought the dagger. You have purchased Night Killer. You have purchased bandages. Along with the Night Killer, Jin Wu also bought a roll of bandages. He held the dagger with a rather scary-looking saw-blade-like cutting edge in his right hand, and wrapped them both tightly with the bandage. Swish, swish. When he swung the night killer around a couple of times, it felt like the dagger had become a part of his limb now. At a bare minimum, I shouldn't drop it accidentally. He thought about tying the poison fang of Kasaka to his left hand too, but he decided not to. It'd be too cumbersome when he couldn't use both of hands. He figured that at least one of his hands still retaining its mobility would make his life more flexible. While he was putting away the leftover bandage into inventory, he spotted the runestone from Igret. Ah, there was this thing too, runestone ruler's reach. You can absorb the skill by breaking this runestone. Right now, he needed to grasp at everything, even if that was a piece of straw. Whether that was an item or a skill, he needed to obtain whatever that could become his combat strength. Jin Wu didn't hesitate and broke the rune stone. You've acquired skill, ruler's reach. Skill. Ruler's reach love one. Active skill. Required mana to activate. None. Even without touching, you can physically influence an object. Ah. As soon as he read that description, he recalled a certain scene. It was when Igret extended its hand towards its longsword that was discarded on the floor, far away. So, this is the skill that made the sword move back then. A skill that could move objects around from a distance with nothing but his will. On top of that, he didn't even have to spend any mana either. If I am able to move any object I see just like the description says, then this would be one hell of a skill to possess. Jin Wu immediately tried to experiment with the skill on the corpse of the centipede next to him. Your proficiency is too low, and the target can't be moved. Your proficiency is too low, and the target can't be moved. If he wanted to move something heavy, then it was likely that his proficiency with the skill had to be much higher. How about this then? Jin Wu dropped the poison fang of Kasaka to the floor, and he extended his hand towards the dagger. Then, the dagger quickly rose up. Grab! Oh! Jin Wu snatched the poison fang's hilt and stared at it with totally mystified eyes. Nice. This will come in handy. And with that, he was as prepared as he could get. When he raised his head to confirm, the required time was almost up. Remaining time, Silverosa 04. When the timer changed from 4 to 3, a new message from the system popped up in his view. Tie ring. Penalty quest will conclude shortly. And another message followed after that one, Titai Ring. 
As you have tried to hunt inside the penalty zone, the difficulty of the next penalty quest will be adjusted to a higher level. The difficulty would be adjusted higher, meaning it'd make the hunting so much harder that the penalty quest would actually serve its purpose as proper punishment again. But, then again, would there be the next time? Jinwu anxiously swallowed his saliva. From here onwards, it's back to the class change quest. Inside that boss room, hundreds of monsters were waiting for his return. Or, the number could be even higher now. If he was being kind here, he was returning to that place, but truthfully, it was more like him being thrown back in there. HP, MP, tiredness, equipment, and even a new skill, and his renewed resolve. His current condition was so much better than when he first set foot in that place, but when he thought about going back there, he couldn't help but get tense and nervous. Thump, thump, thump. His heart beat so hard that it actually hurt. Jin Wu closed his eyes. He tried to maintain his calm. Soon, the familiar mechanical beep went off in his head. T-ring. Penalty quest has concluded. This is my last chance. When Jin Wu opened his eyes again, his vision was filled with the silver-colored knights all snapping their heads in his direction at once. However, they weren't important right now. Right away, Jin Wu narrowed his eyes and searched for something. I gotta find the mages first. Chapter 51 The reason for searching for the mages was quite simple. If my thoughts are correct. And that was to confirm whether the supposition he made back in the penalty zone was correct or not. Meanwhile, the knights all began rushing violently towards him. Jin Wu calmly jumped and stepped on the shoulder of the knight closest to him and leapt up into the air. That allowed him to take in the interior of the boss room in one go. Where are the mages? Found one. Not too far from him, he spotted a lone mage. As I thought, what he witnessed back then was right. Indeed, he didn't see wrong. Back then, when he was being squeezed tight by the group of knights and only his arm could flail about helplessly, Jin Wu spotted something through the narrow gaps he couldn't quite understand at the time. Shh. And that was a mage continuously chanting a spell. A mage busy chanting a spell. At a casual glance, that wouldn't be something out of place. However, Jin Wu still felt a strong sense of discord from that. If that's the case, then how come... How come he saw not one single spell flying at him? Every attack he received came from the knights. Mages continued to chant, yet not once did they complete their spells and display their might. No, there was that one time. Back when one of them used something called Eyes of Detection and undid his stealth. And when that was happening, for some reason, all the knights nearby stopped moving. At first, he thought they only stopped because they had lost their target. However, while he was hunting down the giant centipedes in the penalty zone, he belatedly realized something quite important. Was it around the eighth centipede he killed? The level up message popped up and he clenched his fist tightly. Level up. His spent HP and MP were restored to full. After the short period of elation, a weird incongruency rushed in right afterwards. My level can rise this easily, yet why didn't I level up once in that place? The system said that his health wouldn't recover through level up, but crucially, it said nothing about him being unable to level up. Indeed, his level rose up by five on his way towards the boss room too. However, only during the class change quest, he didn't level up once. Even though he endured for over six minutes and killed a hundred plus knights. Mage is busy chanting but not casting any spells. Knights that apparently didn't give out any experience points. When he took these actions of the two separate groups that puzzled him so much and combined them into one singular puzzle. A new possibility formed in Jin Wu's head. It could be... It was possible that all of the knights there were fake. The reason why all those knights stopped moving when the mage used eyes of detection could be that... It wasn't because he had vanished, but because the mage had stopped casting. If my guess is correct, he needed to confirm it right now. Jin Wu ignored the knights reaching out to grab him and ran towards the mage while using their shoulders and heads as his footholds. He sensed the mage panicking after spotting his approach, and its casting speed had increased. Suddenly the knights no longer attacked him without a plan and tried to gather around the mage to protect it. With that, Jin Wu was convinced now. Tap. He landed in front of the mage. Without a moment of hesitation, 
the dagger held in his right hand accurately pierced the mage's heart. Vital points targeting. Stab. The mage soundlessly turned into a wisp of black smoke and disappeared from the view. You defeated a mage. And at the same time, tumble. Hundreds of knights rushing in to attack Jin Wu all collapsed at the same time. It was as if they were puppets with their strings cut. The knights collapsed on the floor were now, more or less, empty suits of armor. This was my answer, Jin Wu cried out inwardly in elation. He had to go through several near-death situations just to get to this conclusion. Knights were nothing to worry about. No, it was the mages that controlled these knights. The real goal was to kill them instead. The first target my night killer killed was a mage. Jin Wu couldn't help but chuckle as he looked down at the empty robe discarded on the floor. He had that much leeway now. Of course, he couldn't continue to stand around doing nothing forever. After all, his quest hadn't ended yet. Rumble. The ground shook again. Jin Wu turned around and saw that the knights had him surrounded from almost all sides with no gaps to speak of. Meaning, there were other mages controlling these batches of knights hidden somewhere. Knights pounced on him. Jin Wu's right hand moved so fast that naked eyes couldn't even see its shape. Slice. The knights standing in front of him all got cut in half. Jin Wu's eyes opened real wide after witnessing that. Wow. It was worth investing 2.8 million gold on this dagger. Just as the item description, dagger designed for use against knights, said, he could sense a strong magic-like power emanating from this night killer. A weapon from the store is actually pretty good, isn't it? There was a slight deviation from the accepted norm here. Normally, most people would think of weapons sold in stores as something one would use in a pinch when there was no better alternative. I shouldn't be dismissing gold from now, huh? At a bare minimum, this dagger seemed a lot more useful than weapons designed for a hunter. He even thought that, if he sold weapons from the store to other hunters, he would become rich in no time at all. Well, he didn't see any restrictions on the weapon descriptions that he couldn't give one to someone else, which was different from consumable type items. Concentrate, man! Concentrate! Now wasn't the time to get distracted. Knights were still tirelessly rushing at him. Swish. Slice. Jin Wu dodged this way and that while cutting them down. However, this will go on forever. When he shifted his gaze away just for a brief moment, far more knights than he had cut down appeared out of seemingly nowhere to fill the gap. Slice! One more knight lost its head. I gotta find the mages! Jin Wu utilized the shoulders of the headless knight and leapt up before the creature collapsed to the floor. Stealth! Jin Wu's form blurred in an instant. Of course, he wasn't trying to hide via stealth. What he was aiming for was... The mage has used skill, eyes of detection. The mage has used skill, eyes of detection. The mage has used skill, eyes of detection. The ear-piercing mechanical beeps rang out from several directions. Jin Wu ran on top of the knights and quickly confirmed the positions of the eye-like symbols. There are a total of five mages. Jin Wu targeted the closest mage to him. The mage hurriedly gathered knights around it the moment Jin Wu turned to stare at it. But, swish. The poison fang of Kasaka flew out of his left hand in a straight line and stabbed accurately in the middle of the mage's forehead. Stab. You've acquired skill, dagger throw. You defeated the mage, tumble. Once more, hundreds of knights tumbled to the ground. Four more left. Jin Wu stepped on the knight's heads and moved towards his next target. Meanwhile, he sneaked a glance towards the poison fang of Kasaka. He hadn't recovered yet. It was time to use his new skill. Ruler's reach! Jin Wu extended his left hand towards the dagger, and as if a magnet was pulling it in, the weapon flew back in. Yes! Jin Wu snatched the dagger off the air. Now that he didn't have to personally retrieve his dagger, he could take the most efficient route to his target. In the next second, he arrived before the next mage, and, even before the knights could try anything, he cut the beastard up in half. You defeated the mage. More knights collapsed again. With that, not even half of the original number of knights remained. The initiative was clearly with him now. Jin Wu's glare became harsher. There are three left. Perhaps sensing the threat, 
the remaining mages all gathered in one spot. It wasn't only them, either. The knights they controlled also gathered around them. And then, the mages all chanted a certain spell together. Their ominous and creepy voices reverberated throughout the boss room, and soon, they finished their spell. Crack. Creak. The knights guarding the mages were suddenly pulled into one lump and got compressed, as if they were thrown into an industrial crusher. And then, they were reborn as one huge metal golem which began glaring at Jin Wu right away. Wu! Wow, this is no joke, huh? Jin Wu leaked out a gasp of pure admiration after sensing the overwhelming pressure emitted from this giant monster. However, he wasn't scared by its appearance at all. Perhaps because he had encountered several life-or-death situations already, he was feeling expectant rather than nervous. Thud, thud, thud. Whenever the large golem took steps, the ground shook. What a fearsome presence it possessed. Swoosh! Jin Wu ducked lower and dodged the golem's fist. Kaboom! The stone pillar behind Jin Wu shattered into pieces after its metallic fist grazed it. Well, that is pretty serious power. Jin Wu grinned slyly. If he hadn't yet figured out what was going on here, he would have been racking his brain trying to figure out how to deal with this monster. However, there was no need for him to worry about that now. No need at all. Quawar! Just as the golem locked its hands together and raised them high to smash down, Jin Wu didn't back away, but used his skill, dash, and pounced forward. And then, he slid on the floor. In the blink of an eye, he had slid in between the legs of the golem and shot right past it. While the lumbering golem was hastily turning around, Jin Wu had already arrived before the three completely defenseless mages, still busy chanting their spell. Chisto. The shoulders of the panicking mages grandly shuddered. Checkmate. A smile of contentment formed on Jin Wu's face. The old saying went something like, by being together, you'd be safe, and that separating from one another would mean death. Too bad for them, that was not the case this time around. It was far easier to kill them off because they had gathered in one place. Jin Wu freely swung his daggers about, and... You defeated the mage. You defeated the mage. You defeated the mage. The remaining three mages also became smoke and joined their already departed comrades. And the golem that was trying to hurriedly grab Jin Wu shattered into pieces of armor and scattered all over the place. Jin Wu didn't let his guard down, however. Is this the end? Or... Is there something more? He remained alert and ready just in case something else might happen. But then, the familiar beep went off in his head. T-Ring Jin Wu swallowed his saliva. Perhaps to laugh at his unnecessary worries, the system announced the end of the quest, instead. The class change quest has been concluded as all monsters inside the examination chamber have been defeated. Your class will be determined shortly. Depending on the amount of advancement points accumulated, it will be possible to change your class to a high-ranking one. Only now. Only now could Jin Wu spit out a sigh of relief. Foe. What a difficult battle this had been. If he remained fixated on the immediate return stone, he'd never have figured out how to counter the class change quest monsters. Yeah, I'd probably have been thinking about escaping all the time. He got unlucky, or perhaps got really lucky, instead and lost the immediate return stone, and that forced him to focus solely on surviving this battle. The end result was an unbridled success, and now it was time to receive his rewards. Jin Wu's gaze drifted towards the timer. 4, 29, 16. The numbers on the timer had stopped moving. He had endured for almost four and a half hours, and that wasn't all in a quest that could be cleared simply by enduring the combined assault of the countless enemies for a while. He actually managed to kill them all. Just from wondering about how many points he got to accumulate, and what kind of a class he'd earn from that, his heart began trembling in anticipation. The suitable class will be bestowed upon the player after your past actions have been thoroughly analyzed. Yup, that sounds good. If his past actions were used as the basis for the selection of his class, then the odds of him ending up with something weird and struggling in the future would be close to zero now. 
it was probably the most welcoming thing he'd heard in a while. The places where the player stands are dyed with the hidden breaths of an assassin. Corpses fill the paths the player has walked past, and the scent of blood is thick and strong. He thought that this description was a bit too heartless and cold, but after looking back, he couldn't come up with anything to rebut those words. I only did those in order to raise my level, though. After entering an instant dungeon, he kept hunting monsters down until his level would not rise anymore. And while inside a regular dungeon, he made sure to find every single hidden monster there and slew them all, too. Also, although it wasn't his intention, he ended up fighting other hunters a couple of times, too. Assassin, corpses, and the scent of blood. No matter how you look at it. Just as he suspected from the beginning, it seemed that his class would be set at Assassin now. Also, the player thirsts for power, never relies on his comrades, and paves the new path for himself with his own strength. Nod, nod. Jin Wu nodded his head in agreement with the system's assessment. Well, it's not like I had any trustworthy comrades to begin with. However, he couldn't understand why those points were being addressed during the selection of his class. The system's explanation continued on. Your thirst for strong power is intense enough to summon the spirits of the departed and the army of the deceased that unquestioningly follows all of your cummins will pave the road only for you, without anyone's aid. The army of the deceased. Only now had Jin Wu realized something had gone awry here. Tobed, though. No! Wait! Even before he had any chance to raise his objections, the system read off the result of the selection in its usual dry and humorless voice. Your class has been set as Necromancer. What the F I? Chapter 52 What was the meaning of this sudden slap to the back of his head? Everything was going well, so why did Necromancer pop out instead of the expected assassin? Jin Wu dazedly stared at the message. He even rubbed his eyes several times, but nothing changed. Your class has been set as necromancer. The message still floated up there, unchanging. He couldn't believe it at first. Then he became really angry next. I've never even touched the intelligence stat, so what the hell? Just how did he end up with a rare class not even found among countless mage-type hunters in the world? From the moment Jin Wu awoke as a rank E hunter, he was always a close quarters fighter. With the exception of the steel longsword, he always used daggers, and the skills he got until now were perfectly suited for the role of an assassin. That was why he hadn't even thought of the possibility that his class would end up belonging to a different type altogether. It was a magic type, no less. No, more than that, a necromancer. His knowledge of different classes came from video games, but even then, he knew enough about what being a necromancer entailed. A gloomy-looking mage, and an army of undead following that dude. No matter how much he thought about it, that image just didn't correlate to him whatsoever. Jin Wu frowned deeply and shook his head. Let's calm down, first. Even if his thoughts were complicated, his responses should be calm. Being calm and cool-headed, were Jin Wu's ultimate weapons. He controlled his rage and regained his cool head soon afterwards. Hang on, isn't this... Denial, then rage. He suddenly felt like he was acting like a patient who just heard the diagnosis of terminal illness and was going through the so-called five stages of grief. Rage. Then it's supposed to be negotiation, is it? Or was it compromise? Of course, there was no way he'd be allowed to negotiate or come to a compromise with the system. If he were to think about the advantages of being a necromancer, then, just as the system alluded to, he could create his own army? About that much? Well, the problem here is that army will consist of skeletons and rotting corpses. If he walked around with such an army, the whole world would be up in arms in no time. Hunters were already the objects of aspiration and fear, yet he was being asked to become a hunter who could lead around an army of the departed. Never mind the question of this class being suitable to him or not, he wasn't even confident of handling the fallout from that. T-Ring, will you accept this class? The system demanded his answer. What a relief that was. 
I can still say yes or no. Jin Wu spat out a sigh. If the class wasn't forced down his throat, then that meant there was another opportunity for him. If he still had another shot, then there was no reason to sweat so much right now. Jin Wu gladly refused the suggestion. No way. When he did that, the message asked him again. The necromancer is a hidden class. Will you still refuse? Although it was asking the same thing for the second time, he found himself unable to quickly answer back. He was now hesitating. A hidden class, is it? That term might sound like something straight out of a video game, but still, there were hunters with rare and strange abilities even in reality, such as hunters who could create shields or buff others, or even. The Master of White Tiger Guild can apparently transform into a monster too, according to the rumors. All those hunters with rare and strange abilities were now enjoying a great deal of special treatment after being scouted by the biggest guilds out there. Could this hidden class thing be the same thing as the special abilities those hunters possess? If that were the case, this could be an opportunity instead. Suddenly, such a thought popped into his head. The system did say something about this just now. I thirst for power, and that's why it's recommending the class of necromancer to me. In other words, the class of necromancer had the potential to be truly powerful. When considering the fact that most of the hunters with rare skills happen to belong to support type, this could be seen as quite an encouraging thing for him indeed. A hunter with a rare skill that could directly enter any battle. His heart began beating just a little bit faster just from thinking about that. If I could only get to experience the class of necromancer just for a bit, I wouldn't even need to weigh my options this much. However, would anything in this world be that easy? There was no way the matters of this world would revolve according to his wishes, and worse still, he had never heard of anyone possessing an ability similar to that of a necromancer. The thing was, one wouldn't be able to find a mage who commanded its own army to begin with. Just as his thoughts ended there. Oh, Jin Wu took a sweeping look at all the broken remnants of the knights strewn about this place. Those mages! One could say that those mages in the class change quest were using roughly the same ability as a necromancer. These knights were their army, in other words. For sure, it was certainly very difficult to fight all those knights who attacked him with complete disregard for their own lives. If he failed to figure out how to fight them until the end, or if the mages possessed very high close quarters combat abilities, then... The one lying on the floor right now would be me, instead of these scrap metal bits. Jin Wu stopped looking at the knights and raised his head. A certain look of determination flashed by in his eyes. I already possess the close quarters combat ability. Meaning, he was different from those mages. What if there was a mage possessing excellent hand-to-hand -hand combat skills who also happened to command an army? Wouldn't that be the worst of all worst possible nightmares for his enemies? What if... Something he could only think about but couldn't do. Wouldn't it be possible for him to enter a dungeon rated B or higher alone and clear it now? Jin Wu silently swallowed his saliva. If he were allowed to continue raising his stat values after becoming a necromancer, then obviously, the army under his command would also grow even more powerful than before. He couldn't even begin to imagine the effect of that. It'll no longer be only me leveling up. His own army would be leveling up too. Wait, could this be... Suddenly. A chill ran down his spine. Jin Wu raised his head and looked at the floating message. It was still patiently waiting for his decision. The necromancer is a hidden class. Will you still refuse? Unlike how it was usually, the system wasn't urging him on. Jin Wu couldn't help question its motives in his mind. Is this what you wanted from me? Of course, no replies came to him. After a lengthy deliberation, Jin Wu made up his mind. If it was giving him power, then he'd accept it with open arms. He no longer hesitated. Will you accept this class? I will. As if it was waiting, the system immediately displayed the following messages. T.E. Ring. Your class has been set. You will now be given the opportunity to change to a higher-ranked version of this class through the amount of advancement points accumulated. Calculations have begun. Tallying up your advancement points. While that was going on, Jin Wu unwrapped the bandages from his right hand. 
He'd been holding the dagger so tightly that his palm had swollen up rather painfully. Well, I'm gonna get blisters now. He lightly clicked his tongue. Such a wound would have been taken care of with a drop from the healing potion. But not being able to use one was proving to be rather inconvenient in various ways. He finished unwrapping the bandages and was about to store the Night Killer back in his inventory when he heard yet another mechanical beep. Tie ring. Jin Wu reflexively raised his head. You've exceeded the expected time limit. Bonus points will be granted. Bonus points, it said. But that was rather obvious, wasn't it? Not sure how long was the expected time, but well, I did endure for quite a long time, didn't I? He began smirking in satisfaction. Then all of a sudden, several messages inundated his vision. You did not use immediate return stone. Bonus points will be granted. Your remaining HP is over 50%. Bonus points will be granted. You eliminated all the enemies. Bonus points will be granted. Total advancement points tally has exceeded the class-specific point limit. According to the contract, you will be given a special reward. Tai ring, tai ring, tai ring. What's this? His ears hurt from all the beepings, but Jin Wu's focus was fixed elsewhere and didn't care anymore. As a matter of fact, he couldn't even hear those beeps now. A special reward? Those words jumped right up at him. A reward. Not only that, it was special too. Jin Wu stopped trying to store the night killer in his inventory and concentrated on the message. His stares were now firmly fixed on it. Soon, follow-up messages popped up. Titty ring. Your class has been upgraded from Necromancer to Shadow Sovereign. You have acquired class-specific skills. You have acquired bonus stats. You have acquired the title, the one who overcame the adversity. Shadow Sovereign. Hearing that strange term, Jin Wu hurriedly summoned his status window. Name, Seong Jin Wu. Level, 51. Class, Shadow Sovereign. Indeed, there was a new term added to his class column. It's not a necromancer anymore? The system definitely said that he'd be able to get a higher-ranked version of his class according to the amount of advancement points he had earned. And also, it mentioned that the point tally had exceeded the limits of the class itself, too. The end result from all that was this Shadow Sovereign. So, is this... the special reward the system was talking about? The thing was, though, Jin Wu couldn't continue on with what he wanted to say. Right in front of his disbelieving eyes, a truly bizarre and hard-to-explain phenomenon began unfolding. Behind the hologram-like messages, unknown. Black smoke was slowly and eerily leaking out from the night strewn about on the floor like scrap metal. No such thing happened prior to him getting his class. These bits of scrap metal were nothing more than ownerless junk, only until a minute ago. However, Jin Wu closed the status window and swept his gaze around the interior of the boss room once. It wasn't just one or two now. That black smoke was rising up from every single night on the ground. It is possible to perform shadow extraction on the selected target. It is possible to perform shadow extraction on the selected target. It is possible to perform shadow extraction on the selected target. Whenever his eyes landed on targets with black smoke oozing out from them, the words with hard-to-fathom meanings possible to perform extraction popped up into his view. Shadow extraction? He couldn't understand why, but to Jin Wu, those rising smokes looked like they were writhing in pain. As a matter of fact, it felt like they were reaching out to him, begging him to save them. Would it be strange if he said that? He could hear their screams. But he was sure of one thing. He was sure of him being able to free them from their pain. Shadow extraction. Please set the command phrase to activate the shadow extraction skill. I gotta set a separate activation phrase for this skill? Jin Wu pondered for a bit, before muttering out almost instinctively. Rise up. When he did. Whoa. Thick, heavy moans resounded out from somewhere, and at the same time, the shadows of the fallen knights began wiggling as if they were still alive. Jin Wu scanned his surroundings once more. All the shadows found near him 
were beginning to move. Soon enough, a black hand rose up from one of the shadows. It pressed down on the ground hard, and slowly, the arm attached to it rose up. Oh my god! Jin Wu's eyes opened wider and wider. Those things were... people. No. Soldiers possessing the outer appearance of a person. Soldiers kitted out head to toe in jet black armor climbed out of the shadows one by one. This is my new skill? By the time Jin Wu recovered his wits, there were a couple dozen soldiers standing by his side, waiting. Shadow extraction was a success. Tens of soldiers were now surrounding him. What the hell is this? Jin Wu approached the nearest soldier. The first thing he did was to touch it. When he placed his hand on it, he felt something metallic. As it turned out, the metal-looking armors weren't just for show. Indeed, these guys were all outfitted in real black armor and real weapons. At first glance, they look like people, don't they? However, they weren't people. He couldn't sense any signs of life from them. They didn't breathe, and there were no heartbeats he could hear. On top of this, Jin Wu swallowed down his shocked gasp. He sneaked a glance inside the helmet through the eye holes and found nothing but pure darkness in there. Jin Wu slowly took several steps back after feeling like he was being sucked in. These things came out from the shadows. He immediately checked his skill window. Just as the system informed him, new class specific skills could be found there now. Class specific skills Active skills Shadow Extraction, Elvira 1, Shadow Storage. Lovibro or one, he checked the details of the first skill. Skill. Shadow Extraction. Lovibro or one. Class specific skill. Required mana to activate. None creates a shadow soldier by extracting mana from the recently deceased life form. The odds of extraction failure will rise higher depending on the target's original stat values, as well as the length of time since its death. Number of shadows that can be extracted. 30-30. Only after reading the explanation on the skill did he realize the identity of these black soldiers. They are all undead. Shadow soldiers. Monsters. Pulled out from the shadows of the dead. Jin Wu swallowed down his saliva. If these things are really my soldiers then... Jin Wu raised his arm and pointed to his right. And the soldiers all uniformly shifted their bodies to right. The end of his hand slowly moved to his front. And the soldiers too followed after his hand and slowly faced their front. Jin Wu stood in the middle of them. He did his best to calm his pounding heart and lowered his hand. And at the same time, every single soldier knelt down before him. They were moving according to his will. Ha! Huh. Jin Wu let out a soft gasp of admiration as the ends of his lips arched up. Isn't this so cool? Chapter 53 Oops! A thought flashed by in Jin Wu's head. I shouldn't be wasting time like this. He had witnessed the power of his new skill. He could now turn the defeated monsters into his soldiers. If that was the case, then wasn't there a monster nearby that he just had to turn into his lackey right away? Jin Wu climbed up the pile of armors that once used to be the giant iron golem and stood on top. By being so high up, he could take in the entirety of the boss room. Som Poyosh. Jin Wu searched around as his glare became sharper. Found it. Confirming the direction, Jin Wu immediately ran over there. Perhaps he was feeling really psyched. He arrived there in the blink of an eye even though he didn't use the dash skill. Gulp. Jin Wu looked at the corpse of the monster that he was planning to extract the shadow from and swallowed dry saliva. The creature remained in the exact same spot where he had killed it. Igret the Crimson. The sight of the red-armored headless knight half-buried in the thick, sturdy wall told how desperate his situation was back then. Jin Wu stood before Igret. It might have been a fearsome enemy that threatened to kill him only a few hours ago, but now it was probably the best ingredient he could find. Fortunately enough, he saw the black smoke slowly oozing out from Igret, just like how it was with other fallen knights. It is possible to perform shadow extraction on the selected target. Jin Wu's expression brightened. Nice. He already knew the drill. Jin Wu took a short but deep breath and spoke out the command phrase. Rise up. He spoke the activation phrase for the skill, Shadow Extraction. However, the skill didn't activate. 
Jin Wu tilted his head this way and that way, and was about to say the command phrase again. But then, following a tie ring, several warning messages popped up. You have exceeded the number of shadows that can be extracted. If you wish to perform shadow extraction, you must return a portion, or all, of your soldiers back to the world of nothingness via extraction cancellation. Once returned to nothingness, the shadow soldiers can't be summoned back. Oh yeah. There was something like that, wasn't there? At the end of the skill's explanation there was something he should have taken note of. Number of shadows that can be extracted, 30-30. The maximum number of extractions he could perform was 30, which meant the number of his soldiers was currently 30. Jin Wu looked behind him. The shadow soldiers had followed him even before he had noticed it and they were standing in attention. When did they? Perhaps fitting their title of shadow soldiers, they seemed to move around without making a single sound. Whatever the case might have been, if he wanted to extract Igrit's shadow, he had to get rid of one of these guys, just as the system had alluded to. But, it had only been a short while, yet when he thought about them being his soldiers, he kind of didn't want to dismiss any one of them. Did he get attached to them already? With a rueful, unwilling expression, Jin Wu slowly scanned each and every one of his shadow soldiers. As his eyes swept past the soldiers, their names and levels appeared before his view. Shadow Infantryman Lvov, 1, Regular Grade. Shadow Infantryman Lvov, 1, Regular Grade. Everyone possessed the same name and level. Oh well, their origins were exactly the same, so... But then he discovered three somewhat different colored soldiers right at the back of the infantrymen. Are those... Unlike the regular infantrymen, these guys were wearing robes. Shadow Magic, Soldier Levisu, 1, Elite Grade. Oh, he quickly figured out what they were. The three mages that were controlling the Iron Golem must have been revived as undeads as well when he gave out his Rise Up command just now. So, 27 infantrymen and three mages, eh? This was why being rare was a good thing. He excluded the low-numbered mages and selected the closest infantrymen from him to cancel the extraction. And he was really sorry about this. Extraction cancellation. Fush. The soldier turned into black smoke and scattered in the air. Not even a trace remained of it. Jin Wu gazed at the spot of the disappeared soldier for a little while with an apologetic expression before shifting his attention back to Igrit. His preparation was complete. He even had to sacrifice one of his wonderful soldiers just so he could turn Igrit into a shadow. So, he simply had to see some results here. Time to act while the sun still shone. Jin Wu tried the extraction right away. Rise up. When he did that, the shadow cast beneath Igrit began to wiggle as if it came to life. It was the same reaction as when he extracted the shadows from the knights just now. Okay. Good. Jin Wu clenched his fists tightly. He had a good feeling about this. Shadow extraction has commenced. Attempting to extract. What would Igrit look like after its extraction? Jin Wu's hands became slick with the sweat of anticipation. Unfortunately, ting. A mechanical beep akin to a metal plate breaking in half rang inside his head. Shadow extraction has failed. What? Two more attempts remaining. Wee Wu! Hearing that he still had more chances remaining, Jin Wu spat out a long sigh of relief. Hang on. Now that I think about it, the skill's explanation definitely said that the odds of extraction failure would rise up depending on the target's stat values. But having experienced it personally, he couldn't help but be dumbfounded. It felt like he got slapped in the back of his head. This taste of his first failure. Not only that, there was a restriction on the number of attempts he could try, too. So, I have two more attempts remaining. If he failed in both attempts, then did that mean Igrit's shadow would disappear into that nothingness, just as the sacrificed infantryman did? Imagining the worst possible scenario, he felt dizzy for a second. Jin Wu quickly shook his head to clear his mind. Let's stop thinking negatively about this. Indeed, only positive thoughts. Didn't someone say that if you believed earnestly enough, the universe would find a way to help you out. While stewing inside anxiety and anticipation, Jin Wu attempted the extraction for the second time. Rise up! Too bad his expectation was shot down grandly once more. Ting! 
Shadow extraction has failed. One more attempt remaining, Chi. This guy gave him so much trouble while it was still alive, and even in death, it was managing to give him some serious headaches. And here he was, hoping against hope. Now that he had failed twice in a row, his vision seemed to have blurred, everything looking a bit bleak. Fuh. Jin Wu deeply inhaled and exhaled his breath. There were no more attempts remaining after this. He had only one more shot left. Jin Wu closed his eyes and reorganized his thoughts. Well, it could be nothing more than percentages and odds, but... But it was possible that his desire to possess Igret's shadow wasn't earnest or strong enough. Jin Wu slowly reopened his eyes. He sensed the black smoke rising up from Igret reaching out to him, pleading with him to save it. Jin Wu became a lot more serious than before, and he reached out with his right hand as if to grab that pleading hand of the smoke. Rise up! He didn't do it deliberately, he himself didn't quite realize it then, but Jin Wu's voice sounded much heavier and graver than ever before, and it reverberated throughout the boss room. It was then, Ooh-ah! A deep scream could be heard coming from somewhere, and chilling, eerie wind swept by the boss room. Isn't this it? Jin Wu's expression brightened. He remembered encountering a similar situation like this one before. Back when his infantrymen first popped out from the shadows. Ah! Just as he hoped for, as the lengthy scream came to an end, a long black hand emerged out from the shadow. And when that hand pressed down on the ground, a new message popped up in his view. Shadow extraction was a success. Jin Wu let out a cry of happiness. Yes! He tightly clenched his fists. The taste of success was so much sweeter since he had to go through two failures to get here. However, the good news didn't end there. The Sovereign's voice had awakened the Departed's fighting spirit. You have succeeded in strengthening your Shadow Soul, dear. The Shadow's level will now start at seven. I succeeded in strengthening what? A Shadow's starting level could be higher than one. Jin Wu's eyes widened once more. Just as the message said, the Black Knight emerging from the shadow carried level 7 in its status. Mmm! Jin Wu spat out a short gasp. The newly emerged shadow looked exactly as it was in his memories. The mane attached to the helm. The highly fashionable armor wrapped around its entire body. That noble, dignified cape. The only difference being that the blood-like armor now sported a pitch-black color, instead. Everything else was exactly the same. He'd have probably believed it if someone told him that Igrit had returned to life just now. However, the newly born Igrit didn't display a single hint of animosity towards him. No, it just stood there quietly, waiting for Jin Wu to give it a new order. Thump, thump. Hin Wu's heart began pounding in excitement as he stared at Igrit, and there was a big grin itched on his face. Even though his heart was palpitating, there was something he was curious about. Jin Wu's gaze shifted just above Egret's head. Why doesn't this guy have a name? Lavorture. Seven. Night Grade. For some strange reason, there was a couple of question marks instead of its name. And its grade is also different. He understood that its level was high because of that strengthening thing. But still, this guy exhibited quite a few differences from the regular infantrymen. Perhaps it read Jin Wu's mind, because the system sent him a new message with excellent timing. T-Ring. You can bestow a name to a night grade soldier. The bestowed name will be maintained until the shadow soldier is dismissed. Please set the soldier's name. A name, is it? At first, he was at a loss with this unexpected demand, but soon enough, he recalled that this guy already had a name and a smile crept up on his face. There should be no problem calling it by its original name, no? Please, set the soldier's name. The message blinked as if to urge him on with the naming already. Jin Wu opened his mouth. Egret the Cree. No, hang on a minute. When the system asked him to set the name, it meant that he'd have to use that name to call this guy from here onwards. So, didn't that also mean that he'd have to call it Egret the blah blah all the time from now on? Just thinking about that gave him a nasty case of goosebumps. That's way too cringy. In the end, he decided to shorten the name somewhat. Egret. 
Will you set the name as Igret? That's right. As soon as Jinwu spoke, the question marks on the guy's head disappeared and the name Igret appeared there. Igret Lover 7, Night Grade. All he did was to simply give it its original name, yet Jin Wu still felt like he had accomplished something pretty amazing. He was filled with contentment, knowing that this guy was his loyal soldier now. My own loyal soldier, eh? Jin Wu took a look behind him. Twenty-nine shadow soldiers were still there, waiting for his orders. For now, the number was too small. Only thirty, huh? Either this was because the skill level of shadow extraction was too low, or because his intelligence stat hadn't been raised high enough yet. But he was sure of one thing, and that was the number of his soldiers would gradually swell up. Yup, I really have myself a new army. Not only that, they weren't some skeletons and corpses, but an army of shadows. Now there was only one problem remaining, and that was how he'd walk around with these guys. Now that gave him a bit of a headache. Doesn't matter skeletons or shadows. It'd be way too eye-catching if these guys freely walked around in the streets. Would that be all? This skill was already way past regular people accepting it as one of the many awakened abilities a hunter could possess. Either he'd be under the constant surveillance, or worse, someone might even demand him to dismiss the summoning too. Wu Jin Cheol, the section chief of the monitoring division, the Korean Hunters Association. Thinking about how stuffy-looking guys like that man would come around every day and annoy him to no end in the future, Jin Wu felt like he'd die from frustration already. That was precisely why the next skill existed, probably. Skills. Jin Wu summoned his skill window. Class-specific skills. Active skills. Shadow extraction, Lovordi 1. Shadow storage, Lovordi 1. The skill he only checked its name and nothing else until now. The Shadow Storage. That name alone made him think that this skill would help him out in these sorts of situations. Chapter 54. Skill. Shadow Storage. Lavoir. 1. Class-specific skill. Mana required to activate. None. Stores the shadow soldiers inside the summoner's shadow. The stored soldiers can be summoned back into the open or absorbed back at any time the summoner chooses to. Number of stored shadow soldiers. 020. I knew it. Jin Wu nodded his head. Since the skill's name had the word storage in it, he expected it to have something to do with storing away the soldiers. Unfortunately, there was a part that proved to be completely out of his expectations. How come the number is? The number of soldiers he could store was noticeably lower than those he could create. Indeed, he could create 30, yet he could only store 20, meaning he had to unsummon 10 more. Now this sucks. Just which finger out of the ten in your hands wouldn't hurt when you bite them. Just discarding one made his heart bleed. But now, he had to discard ten? Hmm. Jinwoo stared at the soldiers with a rather lonely expression on his face. Obviously, the knight-grade Igret was excluded. Three magic soldiers were also excluded, since they would be harder to replace and also fewer in numbers. At the end of the day, the most disposable remained the infantrymen. Last time, he chose the one closest to him, so this time, he chose the ten that were furthest away from him and cancelled their summoning. Sorry. He prayed for their happiness in the afterlife, and then... Poof. In the blink, those ten soldiers turned into dust and disappeared from this world. Thankfully, his heart didn't ache as badly as the first time. Did the wise old they mean this by saying that the first time was always the hardest? In any case... Jin Wu took one last look at the soldiers and activated the shadow storage. When he did that, all the shadow soldiers, including Igret, all returned to being shadows, as if they were melting like an ice cube caught in extremely high temperatures. Those shadows all gathered beneath his feet next. So, this is that absorbing into my shadow thing. It was as the label said, the shadows were absorbed into Jin Wu's shadow. It happened so quickly too. All of his soldiers disappeared without a trace in less than a blink of an eye. I'm the one who did it, yet I can hardly believe it myself. Utterly amazed now, Jin Wu continued to stare at his own shadow. It was then. As if it was waiting for this, the mechanical beeps resounded out one after the other. T-Ring. You have experimented with all the class-specific skills. Class change has been now concluded. 
exit gate will now be generated. So, it's finally over, huh? What a long and difficult road this was. Jin Wu scanned the interior of the boss room, his eyes full of reminiscence. The evidence of fierce battle could be seen everywhere. Broken down knights, walls with cracks on them, a shattered stone pillar, and the iron golem responsible for shattering that very pillar, now nothing more than a scrap heap. However, as the compensation for his struggles, he was now walking away with so much profit. A new class and skills, several other important things besides those, as well as powerful new allies. A wide grin naturally floated up on his lips. Without hesitation, Jin Wu turned around. The gate connecting to the outside world was quietly waiting for him, as if to congratulate him on his successful adventure. When he took a step outside, the surroundings changed in an instant, and he was back in the empty lot of the local mountainside. It was none other than the very spot where he initiated his class change quest. The time indicated was five in the morning. It was already time for the sunrise. Oops. Jin Wu clicked his tongue while confirming the time. If I knew the quest would end up taking this long to complete, I should have left a message for Jin Ah earlier. What a relief then, that he'd often come home late from raids taking longer than expected, back when he was working for the association. Jin Wu took one last look behind him. But the gate he exited from just now was already gone without a trace. Huh? When looking at the spot where the gate used to be, it kind of felt like he had woken up from a long dream. Was it a dream? No. That wasn't possible. Jin Wu scanned his immediate vicinity. The soldiers decked out in pitch black armors. As soon as he thought about them, they rapidly emerged from his shadow. At first, he simply thought of them as nothing more than monsters. The shadow soldiers. The monsters that stepped out from the shadows of the dead after they were summoned by him. However, if these things were monsters, then just what should the guy who could freely control them be called now? Jin Wu smirked softly. Well, it doesn't matter one way or the other. Jin Wu stored the soldiers back into his shadow. He noticed that his steps going down the mountain were rather light and cheery. Jin Wu's sweet slumber was eventually disrupted by the ringtone from his smartphone. His hand fumbled around near his head and with some difficulty located his phone. Hello? His voice cracked up from his dry throat. Hul. Appa, you were still asleep? You know what time it is? Jinna's shocked voice came out from the speaker. So, he asked her back. Okay, what time is it now? It's two in the afternoon. Eh? What? He glanced at the time on the phone's screen with half-open eyes. She was telling the truth. Appa. You haven't forgotten that you're supposed to come to my school today, have you? Her voice sounded anxious. Jin Wu finally raised his upper body, albeit very slowly. What time should I get there at the latest? Before five. I won't be late, so don't worry. As expected of my Orabeo Nim, when you're near the school, give me a call first, okay? TL, Orabeo Nim. A higher form of honorific than Opa. Jinnah switched on her charm attack and ended the call soon afterwards. Scratch, scratch. Jin Wu scratched his unkempt hair for a bit before slowly getting up from the bed. He didn't have a lot of time left if he were to get ready. Well, I'm going to meet my sister's homeroom teacher after all. Not only that, this teacher would be in charge of her third year in high school, one of the most important periods in a person's life. So, I can't just wear whatever now, right? He opened the closet and rummaged through the clothes in there. However, he was greeted by a rather dusty, moldy odor. Of course, it was not something pleasant to smell at all. Jin Wu's frown deepened. He continued to dig around, but all he could find was an old business suit he wore once during his own high school graduation. Will it even fit me now? He was hoping against hoping, but well, as expected. The clothes were too snug, and he couldn't even move his arms. Yup. My body has grown much bigger lately. Putting on the old clothes painted a stark picture of his current reality. The suit was nearly bursting at the seams, literally. What should he do now? Jin Wu was pondering what to do, but then he spotted the bank book that Yu Jin Ho gave him a day before. It was for the account filled with the proceeds from selling off all those magic crystals. He alternated his gaze between his nearly torn clothes 
and the bank book with its new stamp still sealed together before a smile formed on his lips. Been a while, but should I go on a shopping spree then? Before that, though, there was this small thing he had to confirm first. Actually, it was a bit bigger than that, but still. Jin Wu took off the old business suit and while sitting on the edge of the bed, summoned his status window. Stats. With that, a long board full of letters and numbers appeared before his eyes. Tai Ring. Name, Xiong Jin Wu. Level, 51. Class, Shadow Sovereign. Title, Slaughterer of Wolves, Extra 1. HP, 1135. MP, 1022. Tiredness, 0. Stats, Strength, 132. Stamina, 91. Agility, 111. Intelligence, 70. Perception, 93. Available points to distribute, 10. Reduction in physical damage, 46%. Skills, Passive Skills, Unknown, LV, Max, Tenacity, Love, 1. High Grade Dagger Technique, Love, 1. Active Skills, Dash, Love, 2. Intimidation, Love, 1. Vital Points Targeting, Love, 2. Dagger Throw, Love, 1. Stealth, Love, 1. Class Specific Skills, Active Skills, Shadow Extraction, Love, 1. Shadow Storage, Love, 1. Equipped Items, Red Knight's Helm, S. Gatekeeper's Necklace, A. Superior Knight's Breastplate, B. Superior Knight's Gauntlet, B. Superior Mage's Ring, B. Intermediate Assassin's Shoes, C. TL Note. The author forgot to put Ruler's Reach in the Skills column. I left it as is. Huh. Jin Wu could only chuckle wryly, as his status window seemed to go on forever and ever. It was only a short while ago that there was nothing on this section over here. Indeed, there had been a time like that once. But now, just from looking at his skills and equipped items, his head grew fuzzy. Even then, his class still managed to snag his attention for sure. Class, Shadow Sovereign This column used to be none only yesterday. To be honest, he was kind of bothered by that word whenever he had to look at his status window. The reason for that was, naturally, the word that came before that none being his class. If a hunter was not participating in a raid, he'd be no different than a jobless bum. That's what most others would think anyway. But then, he had to keep looking at the no job in the status window, where his stat values were recorded. So how could he not feel bothered by it? TL note at the end. They said that once you got shocked by a turtle, you'd keep getting frightened by the pot lids. Whenever he took a look at his class column in the past, he couldn't help but feel a bit frustrated. He knew that it didn't really mean his job status, but he still felt quite bothered by it. TL note at the end. They said that once you got shocked by a turtle, you'd keep getting frightened by the pot lids. Whenever he took a look at his class column in the past, he couldn't help but feel a bit frustrated. He knew that it didn't really mean his job status, but he still felt quite bothered by it. However, from today onwards, he didn't have to mind such things anymore. Ha ha ha! Jin Wu chuckled out uncontrollably. Yup. This must be what they call an inferiority complex, isn't it? If he made lots of money like other hunters, he wouldn't have really cared about what others thought of his life outside of raiding dungeons. But he couldn't do that. He couldn't confidently reveal his status as a hunter to anyone. Because he was a measly rank E who could barely protect his own life. That was why. I'm a rank E hunter. Whenever he said those words, anyone with some knowledge of hunters would always say that he was doing something very difficult for everyone's sakes but they would start mocking him when his back was turned. That was why he ended up minding it even more than necessary. But now, he was the possessor of a really cool job. No, a really special trait. His job still remained as a hunter, of course. If he were to describe it, then, well, it'd be more correct to say that he now possessed a special trait of Shadow Sovereign. Although this wasn't the career path I was looking for. But, he had no regrets. No, rather than regrets. He was completely and utterly satisfied by how things had turned out. If this wasn't his room, he'd have summoned Igret and the other soldiers right away. He really wanted to confirm the combat capabilities of his summons with his own eyes. What if these guys were able to display 100% of their combat prowess while they were still alive? I'm sure that won't be the case, though. Still, just imagining it made his heart race. Thump. Thump. Jin Wu felt his heart beating roughly as he ran several simulations of future raids in his head. 
Suddenly he became really curious about how Yu Jin Ho would react. Smirk. When Jin Wu imagined seeing Yu Jin Ho's round, stunned eyes and his slack jaw falling to the floor, a chuckle automatically leaked out of his mouth. Wait, now that I think about it, if he could transform any dead life forms into his soldiers, and if the targets weren't restricted to only monsters, then... Does that mean I can extract shadows from the dead hunters too? It was quite obvious, but he didn't want to picture such a situation since he was talking about another human being here. An undead soldier, emerging from the shadow of a dead person after hearing his call. Just thinking about it gave him chills. Even then. Even still. What if I extract the shadow of an A or an S rank hunter? The combat potential of the resulting shadow soldier would simply be out of this world. Even if a shadow soldier could only exhibit 50% of its original strength, it'd be eminently possible to solo high-ranked dungeons as long as he had his shadows to back him up. His beating heart picked up its pace really quick. Thump. 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 Still, Jin Wu shook his head. Even if that's the case, turning a person into an undead is a bit. Now that was something only a villain would do. His combat potential might improve that way, but he didn't want to go that far. Unless a really evil beastard showed up that was worthy of such a treatment, he'd definitely not go down that route. However, it's not like opportunities to fight other dirty hunters would come around every day, right? And, even if he did find that elusive opportunity, there would be many hurdles to overcome first. Well, a human wasn't a monster, to begin with, after all. Indeed. For the time being, he had to be satisfied with the current soldiers. Besides, I have Igret, and he used to be a boss, so that's something. The level 7 Night Grade Shadow Soldier. Just how good would its abilities be? Jin Wu couldn't wait for the next raid. Chapter 55 Jin Wu lowered his gaze slightly while feeling rather pleased with himself. Then he spotted something else in the status window. Title. Slaughterer of Wolves. Extra one. There was another one? Oh. Now that he thought about it, he did earn a new title as well during the class change quest, didn't he? Jin Wu checked out the hidden title's description. Title, the one who overcame the adversity. A title only given to those who have splendidly overcome their adversity. Your stat values will rise as your HP decreases. 1% of lost HP, rust. 1% gain, in stats. Hell yeah. It was a truly wonderful buff where his stats would rise up as his HP was decreased. The title Slaughterer of Wolves was a wonderful title as well that would give him a 40% stats increase against any and all beast-type monsters. However, because there was a strict activation condition attached to it, he often had to do without receiving the stat buff. It's the same thing as not having a title if I'm not fighting against beast-type monsters. But now, he had gotten a new title with a wonderful effect. After reading the description, he thought that this title's effect would match up quite nicely with his passive, Tenacity. Without wasting any more time, Jin Wu changed his title. Title. The one who overcame the adversity. Extra one. The title he didn't set would be hidden, and if he needed it, he could swap them at any time, too. Next up, it's my stats. The rewards he got for exceeding the point limits of his class yesterday were three. One, his class changed to a higher grade version. Two, a new title. Finally, bonus stat points. Stats, strength, 132. Stamina, 91. Agility, 111. Intelligence, 70. Perception, 93. Available points to distribute, 10. Reduction in physical damage, 46%. He still had 10 points yet to be allocated. If it was in the past, he'd have spent them all in agility or perception, but things were different now. Jin Wu dumped all 10 points in intelligence instead. Even then, his intelligence value only reached 80. T.I. Ring, stats strength, 132 stamina, 91. Agility, 111. Intelligence, 80. Perception, 93. Available points to distribute, 0. Reduction in physical damage, 46%. Compared to strength or agility, it simply fell way, way behind. As a matter of fact, it even fell behind stamina, the stat he decided to put on the back burner while raising his agility first. It was clear proof that he had been looking down on the intelligence stat until now. 
Well, I never guessed that I'd somehow end up using magic, so it's understandable. For the time being, he decided to invest every single bonus stat point he earned into intelligence. He wasn't planning to change how he fought in the meantime, though. I mean, the new skills I got are assassination-type skills after all. A new skill he acquired during the fierce battle, the dagger throw. He didn't even have to take a gander at the skill description to know that it was a dagger exclusive skill. Skill. Dagger throw. Levan. 1. Active skill. Required mana to activate. 30 exclusive to daggers. Causes damage by throwing your dagger. The higher the level, the greater the damage inflicted, as well as the accuracy. Yep, I knew it. He had been fighting his battles as a close-quarter melee fighter. He wouldn't change his current fighting style just because he got himself a new class and a couple of new skills related to that. So, he was planning to use the shadow skills as his backup, while the dagger would remain as his primary means of attack. Well, at least until I managed to raise my intelligence stat to a somewhat more useful level that is. Excellent combat abilities. And soldiers able to support him from behind. The plan he formed in his head as he got his new class hadn't changed. But if there is one difference from my initial expectations, then that would be... That would be his soldiers potentially being a lot more useful than he thought. Who could have guessed that he was able to turn boss-level monsters into his underlings? Still. He felt that it'd be a bit of waste not to utilize his proficiency with daggers and the skills related to that if he were to rely solely on his shadows to fight. Also, he bought the Night Killer only a few hours ago, too. If I knew I'd end up as a mage type, maybe I should have bought a magic staff or something. Of course, if he did that, he wouldn't have cleared the quest and ended up being buried under the knights instead. Jinwu closed the status window. With that done, he pretty much had confirmed every change that occurred to him. Wait a sec, what's the time now? While he was doing his thing, twenty minutes had flown by. Jinwu scratched the side of his head. I guess I should hurry up, huh? The corners of Jinwu's lips arched up. The power of his enhanced stats didn't prove to be effective only when fighting against monsters. When he concentrated, time slowed down. To be more precise, it was Jin Wu who had gotten quicker, however. He opened the door and left his room. He entered the bathroom and took a quick shower. He swiftly wiped the water off of him. He put on whatever clothing he could find and stood before the mirror. All this, and he only needed three minutes. He could have moved faster, but he figured that this old, decrepit apartment would fall apart if he did. My hair hasn't completely dried out yet, but... The end result was him saving over twenty minutes, so there was no need to rush now. Time to leave, then. Jin Wu was about to step out of his room but discovered something and stopped in his tracks. He found the key for the apartment. It was sitting on top of his desk. In the past, he'd have felt a bit lazy and unwilling, but still turned back to grab the key. However. He simply extended his hand instead of walking over there. I mean, if I don't use it in times like this, just when will I ever get to use this skill? The ruler's reach. The key crept forward bit by bit, before flying into his open palm as if a strong magnet was reeling it in. Grab. Jin Wu snatched the key and grinned refreshingly. Having gotten ready to leave in the proverbial blink of an eye, Jin Wu closed the door to his room a whistle escaping from his lips. Jin Wu's first stop was at the bank. He was wondering just how much cash from the sales of the magic crystals had accumulated in his new bank account. I couldn't come earlier, because I've been so busy until now. As the raid team leader, Yu Jin Ho was in charge of managing the magic crystals. From what he told Jin Wu, that kid had been selling all the magic crystals at the end of each day and deposited every single cent into this account. He didn't mention in detail how much the money would be, though. That Jin Ho. He reports to me every little thing that happens, but he doesn't really mention much about money issues. Was it because he wasn't really interested all that much? Perhaps because he grew up lacking nothing, Yu Jin Ho's interests were quite far removed from the matters involving money. No, they tended to be along the lines of celebrity gossip, stories of raids, songs or movies he liked, those kinds of things. Even if it was nominally a conversation, 
it'd be Yu Jin Ho who yapped on and on all by himself though, and Jin Wu would simply listen quietly on the side and provide appropriate responses every now and then. Ah, uh, now that I think about it, a chatterbox guy like him also didn't say anything about his family situation until now. Now? That was pretty strange. Jin Wu combed through his memories starting from when they met for the first time, but he couldn't remember a single instance of him mentioning his family. While thinking that it was pretty bizarre, he had arrived at the bank. Well now, that's some crappy timing, isn't it? All of the ATMs were currently under maintenance. He was left with little choice, so Jin Wu walked inside the bank branch. He got his number in the queue, waited for his turn, before eventually sitting down in front of a bank teller. Hello there. A female teller with a bob-cut hair reaching just below her ears and a refreshing smile asked him politely, How may I be of service today? I'd like to see the amount currently in the bank account, please. I understand. With a smile, the female teller took the bank book Jin Wu presented to her. While waiting for her to do her thing, Jin Wu scanned the inside of the bank. It was a normal Thursday afternoon, yet there were quite a large number of people inside. As he continued to look at the crowd, the female teller got to confirm the amount resting in Jin Wu's account, and her eyes shot open super wide. Heyok, remaining amount, W1, 482, 900 and TL, just over 1,315 mil. She checked the number of digits again, but without a doubt, it started from a billion. Not only that, he hadn't even accumulated this amount over a long period of time. For the past week or so, the records showed that over 100 million won had been deposited every single day. He looks so young, so... How could he? The female teller initially took Jin Wu as a university student who came to the local bank to get the bank book newly printed on because his mother asked him to. But, her expression had changed quite a bit now. The female teller asked him, her voice containing just a sliver of ulterior motive. Oh my goodness! May I ask, what you do for a living? Perhaps she herself was embarrassed by her own ulterior motive. The female bank teller's cheeks blushed softly as she cautiously studied Jin Wu's reactions. He replied as if it was nothing. I'm a hunter. Ah. The female teller slowly nodded her head almost instinctively. The popular rumor she heard was indeed true. I heard that hunters made lots of money, but... But to think, it'd be on this level. All of a sudden... Her life as a normal working-class employee came across as rather pathetic. Only until a minute ago, this man was a regular customer, just like everyone else. But now, Jin Wu looked like a person from another galaxy altogether. He must be a pretty high-ranked hunter, right? This amount wasn't something an average hunter with average skills could ever hope to touch. This would be her first time meeting a truly high-ranked hunter then. The unexpectedness of this situation caused her heart to palpitate just a bit faster. Thump, thump. Her heart was indeed beating a bit quicker now. A young customer possessing well over a billion won in cash would certainly be a VIP in the eyes of the bank. And well, that customer was a hunter, so he should be treated as a VVIP instead. And so, in order to ensure that this VVIP wouldn't slip through the bank's fingers, the female employee began advertising several of the bank's financial products. Our bank has launched brand new products and services especially catered for VIP customers such as yourself. Her smile was no longer the business one, but a real one too. The female bank teller's gaze was now firmly fixed on Jin Wu. Oh my! He's... Seeing his current appearance, the one where he must have thrown on some clothes lying around, and that slightly disheveled hair, her heart began beating faster than ever before. She realized that he must have been a very busy man who managed to find some free time to stop by the bank today. This product has proven really popular with our customers lately, so how about taking a closer look at the benefits it offers, sir? Too bad for her, Jin Wu refused right away. No, thank you. I'm fine. Ah, uh, is that so? The female bank teller's voice was thickly laden with regrets over missed chances. Sensing that this chat might get drawn out if he said something wrong here, Jin Wu quickly took the bank book and stood up from the seat. Thank you for your help. Have a nice day. He made his quick getaway from the bank as the hot stares from the female bank teller continued to bear down on his back. As soon as the bank's door closed behind him. Foo!
Jin Wu spat out a sigh of relief. He picked up on the change in the bank teller's expression the moment he revealed his job as a hunter, attentions of strangers, and their interests. It would probably be something normal for other hunters, but it was still something new to Jin Wu. Well, I better get used to it now. The attention on him would get even worse than this, once he's gone through with the reassignment test, and gets a super high rank. He heard that there were quite a few reporters and fans following around particular hunters as well. He raised his head slightly and saw a large electronic billboard displaying a cold drink advert featuring a famous hunter attached to the side of a skyscraper. Before Gates appeared in the world, one would have found top sports stars or popular idols occupying that position. That's right. This was the age where a hunter would be at the receiving end of more attention and adulation than a celebrity. Even Jin Wu wouldn't be an exception now. The only person who didn't like hunters nowadays were probably employees of various insurance companies. Besides all that, only after he made his escape from the bank did he get to confirm the amount in the account. And his eyes grew real wide afterwards. 148 billion. The total amount of money he earned after participating in nine raids was almost 1.5 billion won. Meaning, each rank C dungeon netted him almost 160 million won. He got around 180 million from the dungeon he raided with Huang Dong Seok and Co. So, the average amount per rank C gate he got was somewhere between 150 and 200 million each raid. Yup, that's why that bank teller was so shocked, wasn't it?